Okay, I think we're streaming now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, everybody. I think we have a pretty serious participation even even before the session actually took off, and we already have people who actually even liked the session even without being streamed. So that's your pedigree. Everybody, welcome to Extra Bytes uh, and specifically Team Bytes. Today, the man at the helm of Extra Bytes is going live. And uh, I think it's embarrassing to introduce the person who conceptualized what we are today, but for the sake of it, we'll do it. So here's Jesse Oberoi, the man who pioneered uh, photography, education specifically in India. The man who around 10 years back decided that whatever knowledge he has gained by the virtue of probably be, being born in a photography noble family, right? And we'll come to that a little later. I think he comes from a family of photographers who have always pursued photography. I think at that point of time, he decided that he wants to take the knowledge outside his household and, uh, and, and inculcate it amongst all the other aspiring Indian photographers. Not many of us can take pride in such a story. The man gave up his corporate life, cushy job, and uh, everything that might appear to us as a struggle, he took it, took everything on his chin and moved ahead. And uh, this year was not a surprise for him because he has probably grappled with far bigger uh, uh, debacles in his life while still holding on to the virtue of photography. <clears throat> so without any further ado, let's welcome the Jassi Oberoi, Akadronacharya. Hey, thank you for that that kind of um, introduction. I I seriously am feeling very embarrassed. I don't know what to say. Um, they have, sometimes even the truth, uh, the way you say it, it tends to become um, kind of larger. It tends to appear larger than ki life kind of a truth. And uh, and it, uh, honestly, today when I was uh, sharing it with my friends, I I was feeling embarrassed. Uh, Come on, like uh, as as one Yogesh Bhatia says that it is like Amitabh Bachchan sitting on the other side of the uh, chair and trying to play KBC. So uh, not that I am Amitabh Bachchan, but yeah, it, it appears to be the same way that I am trying to be on the other side of the chair and being interviewed. And thank you, Soam. Thank you, guys, for uh, supporting. So everybody on on uh, YouTube, uh, guys, these guys whom you see and maybe one or two whom you, you will probably see during the course of the uh, session today, they have been instrumental behind these extra bites and they have been instrumental behind me right now smiling through these challenging times and um, I have no qualms in saying that and, th and thank you everyone for being here. Uh, now how do I begin? Um, uh, it's, it's not a very easy thing to really share something about your life um, but, but let me still begin because um, <clears throat> um, my problem is that I have no concept of time. I, I can't understand time. I, I don't remember in terms of my memory. So um, um, if somebody asked me even one week down the line, okay, when did you, when were you got interviewed? So I would not have any clue. I will say probably one month back. And that has been my biggest challenge, trying to string things together. Secret to happy marriage as well. <laughs> that, that, that could not be the secret to happy marriage also because I even forget my wedding anniversaries. <laughs> That's a challenge. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but, but I think everybody has uh, come to live with that fact. Um, okay, guys, I think uh, let me take you back uh, to my childhood days because everything, I believe that um, whatever you have done even while you are not doing photography contributes to being what you are today. And since I'm a photographer today, even that con contributes to me being whatever type of photographer that I am today. <clears throat> so my childhood uh, uh, was kind of, I spent my entire childhood growing up in my initial schooling in, in a very small uh, town, uh, Katni. Um, people know Katni today uh, because it's a stop where you get down from train to go to Bandhavgarh. So from photography point of view, you would uh, try to just to give you some, some relationship where the place is and all. And my father was in railways and he uh, 
so since we are talking about photography so let me also share that he was a hobbyist photographer so he was working in railways government job but at the same time he was pursuing his hobby of photography so he had three hobbies photography painting and writing he was always more inclined towards writing but um, uh, i've hardly seen him painting i've seen his paintings per se but i have not seen him painting uh, but he was more into writing and photography and being in that small town there were hardly any schools also and uh, so the, the best school was the government school that is the railway school and that is where we used to i used to study and the school was so small to begin with um that at times we had to sit under the tree to study and that's a reality and those days uh, uh, becoming a murga was a common thing so kaan pakad do and and uh, and murga ban jao and i have i have become so many times the chicken of the school or the class and um, uh, so my entire life as a childhood was spent um in trains basically so being in railways so the only mode of transport that was accessible easily accessible to us was of was trains and uh, so but it was a hindi medium school so the struggle was there uh, not that i realized initially um, but yes struggle was there um in eighth standard after finishing eighth standard my father got transferred to another small town called satna in that time things started taking shape in my mind that i had to do something beyond uh, beyond what what i am i feel that i am destined to do and, and trying to keep in understand uh, the places where i was growing up in and uh, so first thing was after reaching satna that i inquired whether there are english medium schools or not so there was there were couple of english medium schools so i took admission in one mission school and my understanding about english stopped even there because it was merely an english medium school but there was no emphasis on spoken english so um, not that i want to talk more about it but just to give you a brief that ninth standard was the first time i got introduced to something called english but it was only in my pharmaceutical b pharm first year uh, is that when i actually started working hard towards Uh, speaking english anyway satna uh, i started dabbling with my dad's camera for the first time i remember i was searching for images i thought that i have it have them uh, the prints of them but unfortunately no um, so i would just pick up some um, some pots uh, with the flowers in them and would try and click some images so that is the earliest kind of inspiration that i feel that i had about photography do in katni going back um, father was so passionate about uh, photography that he had our kitchen was a makeshift dark room so every time he would go out uh, on 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 his um, official travel he would take his camera it was a yashika uh, camera i don't remember the model yashika camera and big bulky camera and uh, he used to come back with the rolls and uh, the kitchen would transform into a dark room and i happened to be a permanent feature in that dark room doing nothing trying to get just trying to understand what red light was and what those smell of chemical was but yes i have i have grown up in that environment so probably and uh, and i think uh, my dad's influence on my photography ended there because he never pushed me into it i was katni means i was in probably fifth or sixth standard that i'm talking about so i was even too it was too early for him to even talk about it um, so but i enjoyed that process and and that continued uh, to different cities um, when when we shifted to satna and then to gwalior and I remember the only thing that I knew that I wanted to become in in my life was a doctor, and not that um, I was fascinated by doctors or that kind of a course, but uh, primarily because I was poor in mathematics. So, since you are poor in mathematics, the only thing that you could take up was biology, with, and you could become a doctor if not an engineer, and. Um, 
I remember even having dropped one year trying to prepare to become a doctor and I failed uh, because of negative marking and all that. That's history. I was actively participating those days, frustrated in Mandal Commission protests as well. So a lot of things were happening because I was really devastated. Anyways, to cut it short again, um, so uh, I said, no, I don't want to do BSc. I, I'm, I, I'm not doing it. Photography still was never uh, kind of in my thoughts that I will, I will ever do photography. Anyway, so I, I went to Bangalore and became a pharmacist. So that is, that is how the initial story uh, stands. Became a pharmacist, came back, started uh, joining companies, um, rising up the corporate ladder, uh, pharmacy I left in between and, and, and uh, went into IT sector also and left IT sector and went into insurance sector when the insurance sector was booming in sales and all. So a lot of things were happening. But one thing that I would like to say, because my journey as a photographer has been also a journey as, a, as an entrepreneur. Um, and things, uh, and another fact is that um, if saying it in Hindi, our Bab Dada ne bhi business nahi kiya. So uh, there is there is no history of anybody in in our family, fathers, forefathers having done business. My cousin does it, uh, but so so for me that gene and DNA was not there uh, of, of being a businessman. But I was always trying to get into something or the other to, to, to be in my own business. Because I don't know, uh, in my initial few jobs, I, I started realizing that <clears throat> one, one job, um, that this job is an odd job. I should change it. And then second job, oh, this is also an odd job. Then I realized that all jobs are odd jobs. And uh, not to demean anybody, um, so Soam is working fabulously. Everybody, many of you do that. It's just my thought. So, and uh, so the, the, the kida that was there in my mind that kuch apna karna hai, but what had no clue. Na, around um, 98, 99, I remember that. I was getting drawn into photography in a way. Um, this I have never told. I have, uh, whatever story people know is starts from uh, way beyond that. But yes, I had some some camera of Sony of 1.5 megapixel something. I don't remember the the model of of that camera. But um, because I was talking to my wife also. And she also said that when when we met for the first time uh, before marriage and when um, I went to see her and uh, she says that I told her that I like doing photography. So so I, I presume that I was already doing, trying to do something. Um, so beyond that, what happened, let me probably go into the presentation and uh, two, three slides and then come back and, and share. Um, further stories, uh, how I really started. But what I would like to say is that uh, when I share about my photography journey, um, it starts uh, with my uh, being an entrepreneur in photography. So both started together. And you will know the reasons why. I don't uh, say that that is the right way to do it. And I always tell everybody who asks me that, no, do not get into this kind of a situation. Um, do not do this. I had different reasons which you will realize. Um, so let me, you have any question to ask, please? I think, uh, I mean, obviously being born into a family which already knew photography has its advantages. So. And then, you know, like looking at your background, right? Probably, I, I don't know exactly if you started with portrait or just about everything, but look at your portfolio now. You've got, and I think you're the only mainstream Indian photographer who has such a wide scale and uh, uh, highly depthful body of work. And uh, starting from landscape, which I think, you're, you know, probably is more of an acquired taste for you, it seems like, you know, looking at your photography, architecture, Right. And then portraits. Uh, I think you've done weddings as well. Right. Very and, initially. And, and, then initial days, yeah. and then boudoir as well. Right. So, you yeah, know, boudoir, 
that that's a concept that's probably alien to a lot of like portrait and boudoir being two different elements so such a huge body of work and starting from probably where you didn't feel like picking up photography even with all the probably was there any pressure and how did that inflection point arrive where you wanted to venture out actually there was no pressure there was there was no influence also because i do not remember my father uh pursuing even photography aggressively after we shifted from katni to satna because he got too much involved in his work um it was a senior position so i think there was a lot of work pressure on him also and that is the time he sold the film ca- film camera and the digital cameras were were coming their making their way in and he purchased one um, uh, i think nikon some um, uh, some some digital camera i don't remember the model because i do remember that he was uh, uh, i was using that trying to do some dabbling around with, with the photography here and there but since he was also not pursuing it and that is the time he started drifting away from photography when was the time for me to have taken a decision that was the time he was moving more towards writing and uh, my another chacha ji my uh, father's younger brother he was much more passionate about photography than my father and he had shifted to us and so that influence was also not there till he was here he was he used to push his son my cousin and and me but then that also went so there was nobody to even even talk about it and i think it all ended just because of that there was no pressure but there was no inspiration as well um so dark room concept from the house vanished after that because um now colored uh, films were coming and he was not equipped and uh, you know middle class uh, working salaried working person um, i always say uh, somebody asked me why do you what they call middle class the middle class i say because they they are in the middle of nowhere that's why they call middle class the middle class i think we were in the middle of nowhere na paisa hai na niche kuch hai matlab ghar hai bas theek hai bahar se dikhna theek hai but nothing else so i think i think that is where things were going and and the only thing that i could think of was getting into something traditional in in terms of uh, uh, doing work or or making a career out of and being traditional uh, since i was bad in very very bad in mathematics i had to only choice in those days were either you become an engineer or a doctor so the, being a doctor was the only alternate option then i could not become a doctor so next best option was pharmacist so i became a pharmacist so i am i am a qualified pharmacist <laughs> nice so there was no pressure per se nice i think the early influence of chemical state state yeah <laughs> i think that was somewhere in the back and how it happened i will come to that uh, how did it trigger i'll come to that so yeah. uh, things were uh, okay let me let me share that only so i think once you get into your timeline we'll get a view into how that career yeah. just started and then yeah so i yeah, yeah i'll i'll talk about it i'll talk about it right and uh, so uh, just yeah. another question like very important to me and something that has always uh, um you know has, so, something that has always created a little bit of dilemma in me how do you wake up one day and you have a job like a monthly pay slip that comes right the security that it provides right and obviously you have studied for four years because of your pharmacy you know that's a investment that has gone into that career how how did you actually decide that okay i'm just going to go to my boss and then you know today is the day when i'll step into somebody else's office for the last time so how did it happen <laughs> i'll try and make it on a lighter note because um, i think i'm very i was i am still but i that time i was very very impulsive very impulse driven and uh, i think that worked in my favor um, though it it's not a good trait to have but probably it went in my favor in those days uh, and and another thing that uh, what what's i will try and relate to day scenario of social media that we get lot of likes and we get carried away right uh, most people get carried away yeah. and they start thinking that they are great photographers those days social media was not all that influential though it had facebook had started orkut was already there when i took this decision so i was a part, i was sorry i was in orkut uh, later on facebook came then i joined facebook as well but it it ended there it was not social media per se but yes 
friends around me were like um oh you just see you do so well you do so well and i was like crazy man i am i'm good and and my company where i was working they used to they gave me couple of assignments and their internal Uh, photography uh, i started doing and said man they these they are professional guys and they are asking me to shoot so i have something in me right and uh, uh, how about uh, trying it uh, professionally and i got even one assignment so i'll talk about it i i think uh, um, let us next three four slides i'll talk uh, what you are wanting to ask probably you'll get the answer there absolutely yeah so let me get into that um so just in what happened mm. okay this tech glitches can be sorry share screen okay <clears throat> so you can see the screen yeah <laughs> so this is this is my story zid i am here i am here only because of my zid because i have said this umpteen number of times in in past that uh, and people know my story my daughter was actually uh, making fun of me before i i joined ki you will say this and let me say this now that i am a horrendous artist when i say artist uh they say that art is inborn for me it was not inborn i still cannot draw a line as a single straight line it is like a rumble strip <laughs> if i draw a circle it has to look like an amoeba that is my circle and i am not joking that is a harsh reality that is the way i have so getting into photography making a decision was easy sticking to it and justifying that was certainly not easy and i had to get into understanding how to really get creative in my mind first before i can pick up the camera so uh, it has now become a part of my psyche and my subconscious but yeah i tend to psych myself into something totally i kind of people don't notice when internally i get into a trance kind of a thing because i have to move out of my normal thing of being uh, creatively non creative kind of i don't know what to say so zid for for people who are not hind um, uh, hindi speaking so it is persistent of stubbornness that has got me here okay now so journey and milestones i'll not bore you guys um uh, but just three four slides just to talk about um how i got into photography um sorry so initial days of vela panti being aimless so 2004 let me start so before that i was doing lot of stuff my my daughter was born so i was clicking her images uh, i just got married and, uh, and 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 i was clicking images of my wife and and i think flowers around and whatever what not but but nothing serious but 2004 i would say that as far as i can remember i purchased my first camera sony cyber shot dscp 32 which is a 3.2 megapixel camera by the way point and shoot and why did i purchase because in 2004 it was the very first time i was going to uh, take an air travel get into an aircraft for the first time in my life and that to going to dubai and uh, from my company so i had to take a decent camera with me and my decent camera that time was sony cyber shot dsc p32 better than iphone what i have <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, so things again continued aimlessly uh, nothing much um, 2008 another uh, milestone here because i had one um, i was working in insurance company i had one uh, my team had won the contest of achieving sales milestones and all and my and along with my team we were going to corbett now this is where things started changing so 
before going to Corbett, I called up, I spoke to my cousin in US. I said, I'm going to Corbett and I want to really take some, some decent camera. Now you try and understand, though I was aimlessly doing something, I could have even gone with the, my Sony Cybershot. But the, the fact that I decided to speak to him and uh, talk to him about which camera to buy means that I can, I can uh, very easily say that there was something going on in my mind at this point of time. Uh, but I was not certain. But while in Corbett, in the last day, something happened. Um, last day, we were to come out early morning in Tikala range. Um, I, with my team, is having breakfast. It is winter, cold, chilly morning, extremely cold. And uh, in the mess there, government mess, we, um, we are having breakfast. A, it was a huge hall. And I'm having aluga paratha and suddenly one guy, young chap in his um, mid-30s walks in uh, with a camera, Canon camera on his shoulder. I remember the model now, Canon uh, uh, 30D, I think, if I remember it right, 30 or 40D, something, something like that. And with a white, long white lens. And he goes, sits across the hall, um, almost like 100 meters away on the other side in one corner. I don't know what happened. I have no clue. I still have no clue. I left my breakfast in between, uh, middle of uh, half eaten paratha, and I walk up to him and introduce myself and ask him some silly questions, maybe four or five minutes. I don't know, don't even remember that why this camera is black and lens is white and why there are buttons on lens also. Um, I have never seen that. And such a huge lens. Probably for the first time I was seeing that kind of a camera firsthand. So I don't know what triggered that into me. That five to ten minutes conversation, he was, and he was very, very patient with my questions. He used to explain. Uh, I don't remember what he answered. So I can, today I can very easily say that if he had answered about the buttons on the lens, he would have answered this is a image stabilization, something, some blah, blah, blah. He came out also with me and made me click one image using his camera. Uh, nice of him. But that, triggered something in me. Can you believe in one particular month I buy this power shot 6, 8, 640. I come back after four days. I sell this off at a loss and buy my first DSLR Canon 400. So that was the beginning. And then things started taking shape because then I did not waste a single day. I might have still taken long, but um, I was at it. I was um, I was trying to dabble into everything that you will see as I go along with my images as well. Um, jumping. Um, so I have only one thing to uh, yeah. one thing to say before you jump to the other uh, next thing, Jassi Ji. Yeah. That to uh, to get a Punjabi to leave his half aluka paratha <laughs> and to go and get uh, somebody's camera. Now, <laughs> oh is God. Now we see the results. That is that is why that is uh, you are right. It is a landmark moment. Yeah, I don't know. I, I seriously, somebody I have been thinking about this. I don't even know his name. I did not even take his number, name, nothing. I don't even know him. I don't even remember who that guy is. Probably he, he must be following you now. But he was my common friend also now. I have no. He clue. must be following you now. I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> But 2008, things started changing. I uh, simultaneously also, I left my job uh, within a few months of uh, having purchased my, this camera. And my boss resigned and he went to Mumbai. He joined another company at a very senior level. He, as happens in most corporates, he wanted his team. And I happened to be part of his team. And I also left the job and I joined him in Mumbai. And then things started changing because I had a lot of time at hand because my family was in Faridabad here and I was there in Mumbai and in corporate office, head office. So Friday evening, there's, after that, there's nothing to do. Saturday, Sunday is at your disposal. And I was also at a very serious uh, senior level there. And that is when I started joining any workshop that, come, that would come my way, any workshop. I get to know that this workshop happening 
I would be attending that. That and photo walks, weekend photo walks. There was there's still a group Mumbai weekend weekend walks. Uh, 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 um, weekend MWS Mumbai weekend. I don't know what. So um, I would attend their photo walks and whatever. I would do that. But during these, I started making few friends also. Um, one is Kaushik Bhatia, who's still in Mumbai. He used to also attend. And another life-changing moment, what happened there was that uh, in one of those workshops in Canon Image Lounge in, uh, in Mumbai, I was attending one workshop and he was also attending. And lunch break happened and we both sat on the same lunch table. And I thought that since it's a basic workshop, so he would be some, somebody like me. Uh, so I all I I just asked him that since how long you've been doing photography? He said I've been doing photography from ten years. I said, huh? ten years, and you are attending this. He says I attend every workshop because you never know that which workshop will give you one tip that will suddenly take you off. And that hit me also. That stuck with me also because after that I did not miss till I really got busy. 2009 was one major workshop which I attended, which was wedding photography workshop at Shari Academy. And uh, that was that was one life-changing year for me. And think what happened after this is phenomenal. And right now, what was happening is that within my office, they had started giving me some internal assignments. A cricket tournament. Ho hai. So I will show you one image also in between. Uh, why don't you click that? And uh, so... Anyways, things were happening. So I was also getting excited and I was getting pumped up by everybody that guy just now pick up the photography and just this is this is uh, for you. Now try and understand in this year, I am in my 14th, 15th year of my corporate life. Spend, having spent 15 years in corporate job, you can understand what kind of salary would you be drawing. It was a six figure salary. And, um, but honestly, you have asked so one thing, which, um, uh, that how would you, um, because you are taking home a fat pay package and you suddenly decide that to, from tomorrow, you will not enter this office. You will not enter anybody else's office. It's never easy, but having grown up in that humble background, um, it did not really matter to me because I was never that kind of money minded that uh, I needed something um, uh, beyond my what is required, to be honest. I don't know even how to put it. Uh, but yes, needed money because I was already married. I already had kid. It was not an easy, easy decision. But how did it happen? Let me just share with the next slide. So 2010 was a phenomenal year. It was life on a bullet train or an aeroplane. I don't know what to call it. Because everything happened in this. Everything happened. July 2010, I attended one life-changing workshop at National Institute of Photography by the other, where professor, late Professor Manohar Desai was our mentor. And I'll talk about it in a while also. Uh, July 2010, after the workshop was over, I, along with another girl who was a part of that workshop, did some serious practice with studio shoots. We could hire, we would hire studio and overnight, full night, we would do uh, practice. Uh, and beyond that also, I used to go out seriously trying to do something. Things were now trying to get into my job head. Same month, suddenly I decided it's done. I have to quit my job. It was that impulsive. And I come and I realize that man is gone wrong. Believe me, is gone wrong because I have family to take care of. Nothing, and they were. Uh, and when I left, there were there was one assignment that was coming my way. That was one another trigger point that uh, I had almost grabbed it. Um, even exchanged emails saying that yes, you got the um, assignment. That assignment was supposed to pay me some good amount. It was an event shoot, a corporate event shoot. 
and i had already done my in my previous company so i thought that i can do it and their requirement was uh, you have to have a 5d mark 2 as a camera so i purchased that also and i the moment i leave the job that project gets shelved so i don't have anything in my hand few more small two three projects that i was trying to talk to uh, trying to get my hands on they were also gone suddenly nothing was there so that july and august seemed like an everest mountain to climb and uh, what i cannot share here um, and uh, probably it will stretch also is the fact there something happened in between in my initial days of corporate life that uh, that left me cash scrapped throughout there was a huge um, kind of loan that i had to repay um, somebody and when i left the job that was the time when things were turning good for me so there was hardly any saving for me till then whatever money was coming in that was going as paying off um, the money to somebody anyway so um, that and when in these two months when i when i was in delhi and i would approach some photographers and and uh, trying to figure out trying to learn and i would not get any help um and that is when i started thinking on the lines of uh, um one thought crossed my mind that in today's digital era nobody has a copyright on education they might have a copyright on what they create but they cannot have a copyright on something as broad based as photography as an education and that is when i said ki okay now let me start working towards it and since i had to make money also now and distractions were huge distractions were my neighbors every time i would come out even though they were not looking at me suspiciously i always felt that they are looking at me what, what this guy is doing at home has he lost the job what is he doing so what are you doing i said i am a photographer and they would look photographer and the picture that would probably come to their mind is that corner wala shop ka photographer wala shop so where is your shop no i don't have a shop so it would further confuse them from that to everybody's questions in the relations and family and what are you doing how are you managing and things are not happening and uh, on top of that there are loans their family to take care and that is when i decided to try my hands at um talking to canon and uh, become a workshop partner and to my good fortune with some help from here and there i got enrolled but this is not easy because at that point of time there were 40 odd people like me who were enrolled with canon i was one of those 40 to 45 people so from here i had to prove myself so i get my first workshop and the guys were in canva they were over smart they gave me not basic i wanted basic ka workshop and they gave me fashion photography do this i said man i don't know anything about it how can i teach i said okay that is when i spoke to my friend in mumbai Uh, what i what i missed in between as a story was that after this nip thing uh, somebody from nip told me that you should go to fx school because there is where bhavpreet ghai is there and she is head of photography there and you should meet her because there is a workshop happening so there was workshop happening another couple of days later i attended that and i met bhavpreet after that and uh, i inquired about the course and the course um, the price was the fee was too high for me to afford and the Uh, registrations were already closed so i wanted to become a student in fx school but somehow um, the next possible date that i could become a student at fx school was one year ahead which i did not have time with me so um, but i had stayed in touch with her so i spoke to her i said i want you as a lead mentor here this is this and she was um, gracious enough to fly from 
I I hope I think she's there only. I don't know. Uh, she knows that it's happening, and so thank you, Bhupreet. Uh, and I can never forget that help. And she flew from Mumbai to Delhi and did this workshop for me as a lead mentor. And that set the standard. That set the ball ball rolling. That was probably the finest workshop that was ever conducted in the history of Canon till that day. Even though there were big names as registered as fashion photography workshop partners there. And then things started rolling out. Um, so this is. The image from I have scanned it uh, from NIP. Now, interesting thing happened in NIP. Uh, I uh, enrolled for this workshop. It was I think four day or five day workshop. And being from Delhi as such, I was not able to um, understand the uh, tight pathways and the overcrowded places of Mumbai. And on top of that, this this. Um, was in Dadar, in the market, and reaching there was a hassle for me. And I enter, and I see such a small room. I said, "Man, have I come to the right place? Have I made the right decision?" You see how you make assumptions about uh, about the place, about the mentor himself, about the institute itself, just by looking at the physical attributes or or the look of it. And uh, and I'm sitting in one corner and I'm hoping I'm I'm just about to get up and I'm thinking that um, I think it was five thousand rupees uh, I had paid I said to help with five thousand rupees I'm just getting up and going and that very moment this beautiful girl walks in so Jenny if you are there hi so she's watching so I've I've stayed in touch with her so she walks in she sits right next to me. and i think she was also thinking the same that and then probably and, and the good thing is that uh, i stuck uh, with that and in this room what you are seeing after some time there were exactly same number of people more who were sitting on the floor but the good thing was that the mentor was late professor manohar desai and he was phenomenal those four days were life changing for me everything changed for me uh, after that i had to practice obviously so inputs were given notes were given good hand holding was there but after that we had to, i had to be on my own and um, i think i'll 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 uh, stop this and then i'll come back to it a little later so so this is this is how um, i started doing things so any any questions then then otherwise i can move ahead i have straight lines also i have i have just yeah yeah please so uh, like just like you uh, of course there is no comparison to the kind of hardships probably you must have gone through i have had my own share of uh, stories mm. like leaving a government job and then plunging into photography mm. so i uh, i say it from the family itself that people look at you like you are the black sheep people laugh at you people laugh at your uh, parents like bheja tha bahar naukri karne ke liye wapas le aaye aisa aisa kya kar kar liya ke wapas aana pada so people look at you like that so did you face something like that or if you Stick have on. then how did you how did you get over it see uh, let me be honest um and here i would like to really say that i have been very very lucky to have uh, my family behind me uh, my father and mother did not say anything and they were supportive and my wife uh, my kids were small but uh, too young my wife also supported whatever you decide it is your decision but how do we you have to be careful and you have to be prepared and uh, probably work towards ensuring that we don't um, really get into tricky situations and if i am sitting here today let me be honest um notwithstanding the hard work and anything i i think that would not have even have been possible had there not been any support of my wife and even kids and the sacrifices that they have made um it is only because of their moral support and their 
no anxious eyes no prying eyes nothing i would not see um, even a hint of tension in 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 their eyes because this journey has not been easy from six figure income coming to a passive where situation where there were months that my bank balance showed 200 rupees there were months and i had nothing in hand that is why i named it as zid you know what i did i put my foot wherever i moved my foot was still stuck not letting that door close it was getting hurt it was getting painful but i stuck on only every time i would look at my wife every time i would look at my parents my kids they adopted very very beautifully no demands nothing there was a people ask me i am passionate i said well really isme paisa kitna aayega i said you are not passionate two things you are passionate about making money there is a difference the difference is if you are passionate what all are you going to pay to achieve that passion to make that passion become a reality and i have always said this and i maintain this that it takes your life and beyond i was a first day first show kind of a person i did not watch movies till my kids grew up and started demanding that they need to watch movies many years not even a single movie my family and i have not gone on holidays even till now we have not gone on holidays because when my kids have holidays i have my priorities taking people on photo tours because i have to make money that is the price you have to pay yeah here i'd like to state that by family i did not mean my parents but then we no, are no. we yeah, have I a joint know. family so the immediate family sometimes yeah. they really get on your nerves so something like that happen uh no um um luckily uh, luckily for me uh, okay let me let me give you another uh, another uh, side to it i started blocking people blocking in the sense not social media type of blocking uh, because there were distractions i think i mentioned in between there were a lot of distractions distractions of my neighbors looking at me uh the distraction of my relatives looking at me they might not ask they they dare not ask uh, um, but more than that uh, my friends who were still working their pay packages their their in their improvement in their lifestyles over a period of time they are buying new cars one one is buying next year the moment i would get over that kind of a trauma that looking at them somebody else would buy it so i had to cut off from that i and i successfully cut off people might have called me names people might have called me i am egoistic but i think that was the only i had to burn my bridges burn to such an extent that now even if i want i can't go back i was subscribed to nokri and this thing and all those things and times jobs and all and i used to get those uh, uh, calls from all those uh, consultants and i had to tell them please do not call me i will have to block you and i did that you have to pay the price for passion you see if uh, i may add right so i've grappled with it sometimes right uh, but i held on you know I, i still probably you know like me and atunu still have our jobs within the group uh, obviously the intellectual stimulation aside but i think you know at some point of time you realize that you are stuck in this rat race right and uh, the stake keeps on going higher and higher right yeah. that promotion okay what after this right and especially when in a competitive living uh, playing field where you are like you said the peers the friends they are bringing home that new shiny toy it just probably you know is a peer pressure that gets on to you but i think it was a very late realization for me but i think you you know like like they say that you know wisdom comes naturally to you i think you figured it out a little earlier than all of us mere mortals that it's the price of happiness 
ultimately what makes you happy is something that a lot of us actually devote a lifetime to understand and then we make our you know adjustments i think you early on from what it looks like you figured out that my long term happiness is going to come from my creative pursuit not from buying the new cars or a new house and ultimately i am not going to be somebody who is going to be like live a life of regrets after 50 or 60 and you decided that very early on uh, yeah i think what you said right now uh, uh, probably live a life of regrets i initially i used to think somebody asked me uh, some time back that do you regret doing something in my in your in your life uh, i was talking to somebody over phone and he said any regrets so far and i really thought about it and i said how can they how can i regret something that i have done you have to take responsibility of what you do you can't regret the moment you start regretting things you will you will get guilty or you will feel you will start getting so much of guilty conscious within you that you can't move forward you take responsibility and face the future head on and and ensure that you don't make those mistakes that you would have done that you feel as mistakes Mm-hmm. and and i think uh, uh, people would have different reasons my hidden reason probably to quit my job was that the moment till i was in the uh, at the ground level working walking feet achieving targets it was a different ball game the moment i reached there i realized that just meeting targets was not enough and i and i wouldn't i won't see anything beyond that it is it was more about pleasing bosses not my immediate boss my immediate boss was a gem but beyond him and things i was not ready for that i was somehow not ready for that things i was feeling misfit i said if this is what corporate life is i i'm sure uh, it everybody would have better experiences than i would i had and then i'm sorry i'm not meant for this but now 15 years behind you in your corporate life what do you do you go back to your nahi nahi sir mujhe senior field executive rakh lo i am happy this way you can't do that they will not do they will even if you want they will not keep you they will laugh at you is gone mad so so i think to 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 somehow justify what was what i was not liking in a way i felt misfit i had to take this call and i had to be responsible for whatever decisions i was taking and i am still feeling responsible uh, a few things i would want to change if i could change something i would all want to change that i want to start little earlier because when i left my job i was already 42 so they say that life begins at 40 i think i began my life at 40 and i am 10 years down the line from the day i quit my job is is i can see now that the turn to this dark tunnel is probably very near now and very soon i will turn that corner in the tunnel and i'll see the bright light in front of me and i think that it is going to happen yes absolutely absolutely yeah. thank you yeah. so shall we delve into your yeah photography <laughs> journey there are there are guys okay uh, okay now let me uh, i will quickly Yeah. Oh man, what happens to this? Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Allow me. When I just a minute. Okay. Okay. So here I was. I will quickly two three slides more, and then then I will move into the other part. now something was happening let me go back okay now this was 2010 2011 uh, 2010 i started as just photography because i had nothing in my mind in my brain as the name so just see over roy so just photography and that to f yeah, photography with f i don't know what but anyways so i enrolled with canon and uh, within a year there was a reminder from canon saying that just photography is not an illegal entity so you will have to create a name that is when i formed the company the footmarks now the footmarks um, was a beautiful name and i wanted to make it neutral because we were venturing into photo tours and lot of stuff 
and uh, 2011 also was phenomenal because 2011 was the year when i started taking out wildlife photo tools as well and we were within footmas were the first company uh, photo tool oriented company a workshop oriented company in india to have conducted a fine art nude workshop in st petersburg and we were the first one to have done that we did that for two years in succession. For, for some reason, we uh, discontinued that and probably will continue again. Now, uh, footmarks, then three friends um, who had become friends over the period of time. One I mentioned as uh, Kaushik Bhatia, whom I met in my workshops in, in Mumbai. Another one was Saurabh Tuteja. He, um, he, he met me while I was in life insurance business as, as a branch manager. And he was uh, one uh, vendor there. And we became friends. Then uh, there was another guy, Murtaza uh, Khan. He was my colleague in the same insurance business. But we three became friends. We four became friends. And when when I started trying to bring footmarks up, these three suggested that we would like to join hands. And in 2012, we with fanfare joining hands with Smart Photography Magazine. And uh, we, in Five Star Hotel, we launched our, our company, new website, a lot of things happened. And um, anybody who reads Smart Photography Magazine would uh, relate to one name, Ronnie Uncle, Surohinton Mehta. Uh, he became a good friend and we conducted a lot of workshops together. But very soon we realized that during those days especially, one such venture in photography is not enough to feed four people. Try and understand that. And very mutually, humbly, we decided, we are very good friends, but we decided to call it quits. It, things are not working. So we have to take a call. We can't keep on. I did not want to be in a situation where one after another, I'm taking a decision and they are becoming a burden on me. As such, one decision of leaving the job, quitting the job was itself a huge burden. And, and, and so I did not want the another shoulder to carry that burden. Anyways, so we decided to call it quits and we decided to remain. It was all mutual, everything. That is when another colleague from insurance approached me that he wants to um, uh, he wants to start. He was a hobbies photographer, was studying in, uh, uh, he was studying, becoming a pilot in Netherlands and he had come back and he realized that those days, there was a recession in the airline market and he was not getting a job and he said, let me get into photography and he approached me and he said, okay, I and my friend are there and we are trying to invest into creating, making a photography school, starting a photography school and we would like you to enter. I said, I have already lost money. I have nothing in my hand and uh, they said, no, no, we are investing but so whatever you could invest, you invest and then you join hands and then they, they started Indian School of Photography. My mistake that I trusted only one guy. I did not even ask him that who's the other guy because he said two, two of us. When they met him, it was all good, decent, nothing wrong. Then things started moving and I am, um, I am very mellowed down now. Those days I was kind of a gorilla marketeer. So if things would come to, uh, for me to promote, I would really go full out, full hog promoting things and, and going very, very aggressive. And for a couple of two months, everybody knew that ISP is just, just is ISP as, as, uh, and, and things were moving very smooth. Suddenly things started getting ugly. The other guy, every time he would speak to me on phone, would speak to me with explicitives. Gali de ke baat karna. Let's say, he would say that workshop, ye wali karte hai, main ka hai karte hai. I have another ideas also, so let me do this. I'm just saying ideas. And he would like teen char gali deke and he would say, you don't know who am I and I'll, I'll screw your happiness and I'll, I'll get you sorted. I said, what the hell is going on? <laughs> then I started finding out and he was a son of a famous politician of Delhi. I said, I'm not in for this. So within that, that happened in, uh, that happened in January, 2013 and March, 2013, I said, sorry guys, 
I am not in. I can't handle this. This is beginning, and I am getting abuses, and I'll get you sorted, and all those things are happening. And said, I I can't live this here. I am I'm here for my passion. This is not meant. And can you believe? Within three four months, I was from just photography to foot marks to ISP and gone and. nothing and while in isp i had started speaking to hasselblad team hasselblad team in italy i had reached out to them luckily i got the response also and we were talking about from isp to bring them to india for workshops and that was supposed to be a milestone event to happen and uh, and suddenly i was not a part of isp so i realized that they would be getting in touch with hasselblad and they did i all i did was i just write wrote to them that i am no more a part of isp and you can still continue doing what you want and that guy very clearly told me that they don't know isp they know just you bhai and they would like to go with just you bhai i said but i don't even have a company i have nothing it was a vacuum he said whenever you decide the name just let us know we are on we can push it by one month or so but it's okay we are on with you if you say no to us we will not even come to india and that was a big thing and that is when i was sitting with my dear friend pankaj anand and uh, i came out with the name of Uh, light chasers that point of time and uh, we i decided that there too many things are going on too many negativity is being spread because of lot of names getting uh, I, i'm promoting one company today tomorrow i am uh, promoting some other company and people are losing trust in us by that time through footmarks alone we had done at least 20 to 25 photo tours and big time i mean two photo tours to uh, st petersburg one photo tour to to bangkok thailand for fashion three photo tours to goa for fashion go goa series started there uncountable number of workshops that had gone into it we had done oli also with canon where we we taught cinematography and people were suddenly looking at us with disbelief what is going on and i said i had nothing left with me all investment gone everything zilch and then um, then i said I, i said with my family i said one last try if this doesn't work and i'll only work make it work only for one month and if it doesn't work i'm quitting photography and i'm getting into my job now. and they all agreed they said whatever you decide so they never so all had soft to their uh, belief in me and light chasers and uh, and to ensure that people do not we win people trust from day one even though we did not have money we said we will go with private limited we will not any more go with any proprietorship or partnership we will go with private limited i and my wife will become the directors in that and uh, equity holders and all and we started and my chartered accountant was also my friend who from photography he had attended couple of workshops he has gone to st petersburg also so he was gracious enough to support me with with not charging fees at all initially so that support came and that is how light chasers started and our first event as light chasers was was this hasselblad 19th april 2013 was this event created hasselblad workshop first time ever in india and we got yellow perfido along with the hasselblad team to come to india and do two workshops back to back one in delhi one in mumbai and they were phenomenal success we created history nobody before that nobody after that had done 
a formal workshop with Hasselblad. And what we did in this was even more beautiful, even more phenomenal. So this is a group photo from uh, the Mumbai uh, workshop. So you can see the, this is the maximum we could handle. So this guy, this is Yellow Perfido, who came as in our first inaugural Extra Bytes session. First session of Extra Bytes we did with Yellow. He is Kaushik Bhatia here. Uh, this is Bhavpreet Ghai, uh, who did my first workshop for me in Delhi with Canon. Um, he is a cinematographer in Bollywood, Sharad Chandra. He is a dear friend. Uh, he has produced many films and you will see his name coming out as uh, a new launching new films very, very soon. So this is the kind of crowd that we had. And this is the guy from uh, Hasselblad himself, the team. And you know what they launched in Asian market as a camera through this workshop was, sorry, a uh, oh man, I got it. Sorry, uh, I, I missed it. It was uh, H5D camera, Hasselblad. That was a 60 megapixel medium format camera. We held it. We used it to create images. That was phenomenal. That was an Asia launch in our this workshop. That was our first workshop was a huge, huge success. I am really choked with emotions. Anyways, um, anyway, moving forward, um, uh, during this time, um, um, I have jotted down the dates because I'm very bad with dates. And then May 2013, this happened. And we continued doing a lot of stuff in between. So one month deadline was also over <laughs> with my family. And then we launched something called India Clicks. And we partnered uh, in sponsored by Canon and Adobe also. And uh, we partnered with Taj Lit Fest. That happened in December uh, 2013, where we did photo exhibition, free workshops, photo talks, photo walks, lit fest, and India clicks. That was another milestone achievement. And then this was converted into a symposium, which we did in February 2014, um, where, uh, where we had speakers like uh, uh, Sudhir Shivram, Enjo Matthew, uh, Ravi Dhingra, Sanjay Nanda, Ashima Narayan, Neeta Shankar, um, Subir Basak, and uh, um, late um, Anamitra Chakladhar. All these people we invited, and it was a three-day symposium that was a huge success again. Huge success in the sense, a lot of mileage in terms of financials, yeah, we lost out. But I think uh, nobody could... Uh, muster enough courage to come together and do it again and the happy faces tell a tale uh, we did this in in, Del in, uh, in Delhi Heart in February I became uh, and that was December 2013 was the first year when they launched Canon Photo Mentor program officially and I was the first one to be signed by Canon as, a, as an official mentor and uh, I was with Canon for till so uh, 2018, and now so I'm with Lumix. So, anyways, um, now February 2014, we did India Click Symposium, and I think we will, yeah. So this is then I will go to now I'll go get into start getting into images. Any any questions so far because. I've been talking, talking, talking. So just one way talk. Your journey predates any of ours. So uh, this is educational. This is an awesome journey. Seriously. Yeah, this is it's a pleasure. I'm sorry, Prakash. Go ahead. To hear that. So there is no question simply. I think uh, for me, you know, like I've, I've never really seen anybody's journey specifically who I connect with recently, specifically, you know, and, and in India who started like you did, who had corporate and then brand sponsorship so early on. 
right? So that itself is inspiring. And these brands, they do not typically associate unless they see quality, right? So that's something I'm sure they're connected, you know, that they saw. I don't know. Value in your work or professionalism. I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm myself because I've never shared my story so far in so much of detail. Uh, people have heard bits and pieces of it. Uh, but uh, so even I'm emotionally joy because because journey, you know, when I was creating this presentation, first slide, the first thing that came to my mind was Zid. I did not have to think about it. And I think that is that is how I'm I'm still sticking on. Right. Putting my foot in the in between the door and uh, um, yeah, Prakash, we can hear you. Um, so, um, in the door, not letting it close. And my family being as a pillar behind me, um, supporting me, they have never demanded. They still do not demand. I am the one who's a spendthrift right now. And everybody else wants to, if I bring some, if I go to Iceland, if I go to Singapore, if I go somewhere, Dubai, I bring home uh, stuff for my, my wife or my, my kids and they would scoff at me why we don't need this and i think these uh, and i if not for them i wouldn't have been sitting here let me be honest because the moment you see those stress lines on their faces you have to leave your passion and get into that True. into making money i i also think that long term happiness is something that we do not probably care as much as we care about short term happiness yes so. yeah people say that what has photography given you i know that they are asking for money for me to answer about i was never looking for money in photography i was looking for something else and i think it has given me much more than what i was looking for i mean how would have i known that i will be even talking to people like so i would be talking to people like um all those some some Brian Peterson who's written books in photography. Right. He I would be directly sitting with him on Zoom and interviewing him. And and this is phenomenal. Oh. And I, I came from, I will talk about that in, in next when I get into images now. But I came back with a lot of ego initially. Mm. Imagine I am reporting to the vice president at that point of time. Had I been there, stuck, st stuck with that job, I certainly would have reached very, very high levels because it's already been 10 years now. And I was already directly reporting to vice president there. I was national head at that point of time. Right. And, but, you know, um, my life was today, if I look back, my life was like a, a frog in a, in a well. Mm. who feels that he is the king mm. and today and and there's a there's a there's a saying that uh, there's a uh, learning for everybody out there if, if somebody is trying to get into photography don't run after money money is a byproduct if money is not a byproduct product you are stealing right Money has to be always a byproduct. And Rajneesh, I met him for the first time, if I remember it right, correct me, Rajneesh, in, in Taj Lit Fest 2013. And Pergo Pehli more than my image getting, I have to see my image, I have to meet you. I said, How can somebody see this? And he said this, and he 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 came to Agra to meet me. And I said, is it really real? There's somebody idolizing me so much that he's driving from Delhi to Agra. Not that Agra is too far, but his sentence that um, image to lagi hai, but I want to meet you. I said, dude, I'm coming back to Delhi two days. And guys, another person. So people have come, uh, another person, if you see Exploring Light, what it is today, more than me, believe me, it is this guy Rajneesh sitting here. And I'm openly acknowledging it. 
you need you need people to support you morally in whatever way without even saying it and there have been people i have been lucky people say that um, you've been lucky yes i've been lucky because i've been lucky that whenever i was in on a crossroad there was somebody come and suddenly appear and i would continue uh, sir i would like to share that uh, uh, that incidents like uh, when you were talking about uh, and uh, so i would like to share that that thing only that uh, i drove to agra to meet you actually and uh, on that time uh, I, i came with a friend and i told him that one day i want to work with him yeah I, you he told me that i remember that sentence yeah and thanks a lot for the wonderful opportunity sir are are do oh <laughs> okay we are already so you know it was a very you know something that you know i always think is right and i think this discussion is tilting and gravitating towards the same fact and is an african proverb if you if you want to go fast go alone that's what they say but if you want to go far go together right and uh, it's so true so true so all true. These, yes so that's true. all thing i've seen so true yeah. so true anyway uh theek hai sir abhi now we'll jump into your images yeah so let me get into the images and there is a story that will again move forward um, through these images as well uh let me share okay so i am starting with my early days now early days you will see what i was uh, what i am talking about right from 2004 um, or whatever so uh, okay now this image has a history i was searching for this image like crazy and finally i found it in one of the hard drives you know and there is a learning for new guys here when i came back um, when i was in delhi not came back when i was when i purchased my first 400d that it's is those days and i was so hooked on to learning that we have a very beautiful small garden in front of our house and winters would see beautiful uh, blooms of flowers bloom into the in the garden and i would get up in those wintry mornings at 5 o'clock and wait for the first ray of light because somebody had told me that early morning light is good for photography so i so i would lap on to certain things from that that time till 9 10 i am in that small garden trying to click images of flowers you know what happens is okay now tell, let me tell you what happened now i click this image and i fall in love with <laughs> and i show it to my cousin who is in us now not first to him i show it to couple of people and uh, at that time there was a canon image uh, uh, no, no, um, what is that um, canon edge website was there that was an image sharing website it is very, it was very different from what it looks today if if it exists today i don't know uh, where you could share your images being a canon owner and different photographers uh, like what happens in 500 px of flicker they would comment on your images and i would post i posted this image so happy that i clicked one good image and one comment came learn how to focus <laughs> i said man this is bad <laughs> and i still could not see that this image is out of focus and i showed to some people more and they say learn how to focus and i send it through a mail to my cousin in us he says it's a nice thing but it should have been in better focus so he was my cousin young cousin younger cousin so he did not want to annoy me so he put it in a sugar coated and i said man this is and i could still not see that it is out of focus see what happens is you fall in love with your images when you work hard towards them and even if it is a work of trash you still like it and you don't get to see the anomalies uh, the the shortcomings in that image and from that time onwards there was this guy who was another turning point in my life uh, by the name dethan punalur uh, dethan punalur uh, punalur and he was 
he had a, he used to run a small studio in very small town beyond Uti Kunnur. Anyway, so he every time I would put some image on on not only this any other image also on on uh, uh, Canon Edge. What is this? Just three words. Bad image. And I said, what the hell does he think? And then when, and then suddenly after a few months, I realized that this is not going to work. Either I can continue fighting and, and blocking them. And how can he say that he doesn't know who am I? Who am I reporting to vice president? Nothing more than that. But still a lot of ego in me. And uh, then I realized that I have to do something about it. And I especially went and in the meantime, I had uh, shifted to Mumbai and I um, went to meet him to Kunnur, especially to understand what he, what he knows. And I spent three hours with him. It was life changing. And um, I'm still connected with him because, and that, that brought a lot of change in me. And that is when I started uh, working towards detaching myself from my images and trying to understand and analyze those images. Anyways, moving forward, these were the things that I was experimenting with. So there was Better Photography magazine who would come, which would come and every issue would have something to do. So Diwali issue had uh, being creative with Diwali lights. So, so zoom in, zoom out and, and rotate your camera and do what with the humble Diwali lights and I would religiously follow each and every such monthly assignment and trying to master it. And uh, so these are a couple of um, images from there. There are many, but I'm just sharing a couple of. But what I was doing is I was, and that time I had done one thing very interesting that uh, instead of JPEG, I was shooting raw. Raw were lying as such. I took me some time to understand um, and then while saving, I was saving these trashy images at TIFF because somebody told me that saving TIFF will give you a better print result. So I didn't realize that these print images will not need to be printed. But anyways, so this, uh, I was still applying a lot of things together, bringing them together. And uh, this is my, this was my version of landscape um, and uh, Lightroom, I was dabbling with the presets and the first moment I would like my the image um, uh, appeal to me, I would immediately post it and will get brickbats for that. Uh, what is this? This is not good. I don't, this is bad image and, and so, so. Um, Your lines were still sorted. Your lines were still sorted. <laughs> uh, I don't that's, know. That's what Rajan, Rajan mentioned that at least the Composition is bang on. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh. And also, this image, I'd like to add, you can Facebook, it will come to 500 likes. Oh my God. Oh my God. You will go. You will go. I know. It will come. So, uh, this was my idea of a landscape. Uh, and I was traveling that time. I was, I was so excited. I had money that time. And I used to, I traveled after having purchased my first camera to Goa, twice to Goa, um, um, twice to Kerala, um, once to Himachal Pradesh, um, at least seven, eight new places I traveled just to do photography. And I was screwing it up badly, but I was still trying to do something. So this was my idea of landscape. Um, and clicking something and then over sharpening it also on, on Lightroom and making it look edgy and I, I don't know what was going on. So I have very horrendous images. I'm not going to bore you with all those images right now, but uh, this was my idea of portrait. Look at this. And, and again, uh, I still have this uh, man. I want to break that habit of going up close into the face and create a portrait. I wish I want, I, I can break that habit. Um, I do break it at times, but first tendency is to get into work. And this is the kind of images that I was getting no details and, and uh, nothing. And just one preset, uh, Lightroom preset and while it's there. And so 
Uh, this image I've I've included uh, because in, uh, this this image will tell you when I share that what kind of thought process that I was in. I, as I said, these were the days I was creating trashy images, but was very high on ego. I was so high, I was almost arrogant, and I posted this image on Flickr. And somebody who's very senior, I don't remember him now, to be very honest. Uh, but at that point of time, he was a great flower and macro photographer in India, right? I have, I don't remember him at all. He just very humbly, very humbly pointed out that it's a nice image, very decent try for a beginner. Only if you can manage this specular highlight, okay? Nothing wrong with this comment very positive and I was so egoistic and arrogant. The first thing that I do is getting angry and looking into his profile in Flickr and searching for some image which could have this kind of a mistake. <laughs> and I found one <laughs> and I pointed, see here, something like this. And he just smiled and I come in. He realized that there's not, it's not worth uh, getting into an argument with some somebody as uh, idiotic as me. And that was the kind of person I was. And later on, I realized that I have to be humble and accept all those uh, inputs with humility and try to implement them. So people are not saying bad because they are jealous of me. They are saying bad because they feel that this has a potential. And if I improve, um, I will be able to create better images. This was the cricket tournament that couple of cricket tournaments that I shot in my company. And how was I shooting? Because I had 1855 and 55 uh, uh, 250 lens. So all I can say is, just visualize how Mr. Bean would shoot if he has to give an assignment. So he would hop from here and there with the camera and try to, I was trying to get closer in between the baller at times. And I was shooting these images and I was feeling so delighted that I am the master. Anyways, somebody told me that you should look for great angles. And this is what the angle I found. And I don't know, but, but this is the angle that I found. But that is in the angle, huh? That's a good <laughs> angle. <laughs> I don't know. And I would <laughs> super saturate those colors. And it was crazy. And uh, um, there, was, there was enough, so much of angles that I was doing. And people would ask me, why are you creating those angles? I said, oh, see, they, they look good. And I would not realize that. Um, anyways. This was one of the decent images, I would say, that I created in Hong Kong and uh, much better ones than, than what I was doing. And even better than this was this, which I believe, which I, uh, that point of time, it was a reflection of some building in another building and I could spot it. This time I was working hard to spot things and I would create uh, images which uh, are not looking normal, normal compositions and all. And uh, this is just one example. Post-processing might have gone awry, everything, might, but this is what I saw. And these are the things that I was seeing. This was uh, from the workshop, that wedding photography workshop at Shari Academy. And I was learning composition and Girish Mistri, sir. He is a wonderful uh, mentor. And though the group size was 2025, 20, I remember, I still could get back with a lot of uh, learning. And this is one image that I created there um, in, I think, 2009, when I'm talking about. This was the shoot that I did with Jennifer Lucien, who the girl who was sitting next to me after that NIP. So we did one shoot. She knew um, one uh, dance academy uh, and she offered them that we will create their portfolio. And uh, this was a serious trying sessions, trial sessions, 
experimenting sessions, but we were doing it, creating free portfolio for others. This is one image. There were many images. I'm just sharing one or two images just to show you what type of things. And this was my first, mind you, this was my first ever in-studio shoot, independent shoot with using all those light strobes. Selective coloring, blah, blah, blah. But so very interesting thing about this is that uh, I see this being done by many today as well. So I, I was learning how to create perfect black background. Okay, that is the story. And I learned it somehow and I clicked this image. Now something is not good here. What is not good? I didn't like this. I wanted perfect sync, sync here. So mirror image, sorry, kind of a thing. And um, so what I did was this. From this to this. And I thought that I have done, I have played a master stroke. Nobody will be able to figure out. And I post this image on Facebook. That time Facebook was there. That time this, uh, uh, this, um, group was very famous. I, the na name of the person who was running the Cyrus Khamak. Uh, he was a wonderful person. He taught me a lot through Facebook and uh, Mega Shots. Mega Shots was one book. And he said, I know what you did here. I said, what do you know? And we got, I got into an argument with him. I said, what do you know? He told me this. I said, no, you're wrong. I've not done this. I defended something that I already did. And he was good enough not to argue further. He says, okay. Then later on, a couple of days later, he tells me that if you really want to grow, you'll have to accept. There's nothing wrong in it. But you have to accept that you've done it. If you've done it, nothing wrong in it. What is wrong is that you're not accepting that you've done it. And that was the changing moment for me again. I said, man, there is something in, in what he's saying. And that was the time I started really shedding my ego. I, I had to work hard, but it was required. And I, I did that. And so Cyrus Khamak, another person who changed the course of, changed the direction in my photography journey. Um, I have not seen him. He's not active anymore. I don't know where is he, but uh, his website is also not active. So I just hope he's doing something wherever he is, he's doing fine because I owe it to him a lot. Um, and uh, so this was probably, so then I will move into, so from here, whatever I'll show is, is, is I'll show my, Images, good images from different genres. So, one, one night presentation is, is over. One, one question. Uh, okay. Now, because you've grown, and you know, like I think uh, Prasad also says on the call, uh, sorry, you know, in YouTube, uh, kudos to you for opening up, for having the courage to open up so much, and then actually labeling you as somebody who was not probably as open to feedback as you are today, right? And that transformed you. Now, my, my question specifically to you is, whatever the, you know, like the, the, the landscape of photography in India or the state of photography in India, right? Uh, I think the biggest impediment that I personally see is people not being really aware of where they stand. And that's also partly because of the ecosystem where, you know, like uh, I think, you know, India is the number one, uh, subscription holder on Facebook, by the way, I don't know if you know the stat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. imagine the amount of likes and uh, the, you know, the positive reinforcement that's coming from friends and family that, hey, you are a great photographer, right? Oh, this looks amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So how would you tackle that today, right? Through social media, like somebody starting off, somebody who's living in that dream that I am great and not, and that true feedback is not coming through either because the feedback is not being provided or I'm not willing to accept that feedback. What would be the right way to go about it? See, 
I'll tell you how did it come. I have no answers to that because it's an individual trait that somebody will have to change, and the the process of change is certainly not easy. Let me be honest. Again, going by my own experience. So, what? How would he understand and bring about that change? Is his individuality? Uh, it was my individuality and my reality. My reality was, I I think that was the main thing that brought a change in me. my reality was that i had left a job i was almost about to leave a job let's just start from there and i was serious about photography let's not even get to the job part i was serious about photography and when you are serious about photography god damn it do something good i have been collecting stamps mere paas i still have that album lying i stopped doing it but when i did i did it with passion if it is still there in my house preserved somewhere with all those pages intact even the labels intact the stamps intact that means i was passionate about it and when you are passionate about it you do it you try and improve when the you are genuinely wanting to improve then get into self introspection it is easy to get angry it is easy to reject somebody's input it is easy to get arrogant very easy and i over a period of time i let me be honest it's not been easy over a period of time and i suggest this to everybody as an answer also over a period of time i have come to realize that this arrogance is not taking me anywhere even if i get into a job it will hamper my growth so hold on listen to them start taking those inputs as a pinch of salt and stay one thing very clear in your mind why you are into photography and i always say that i was there in photography for the love of photography not for the money of photography had it been the reason money of photography i would not have been here because there was no money and once that is clear then go about taking one step at a time and that one step taking might take few months it's easier said than done also but being at it my problem was that i did not even have time at hand i had to do everything fast forward if you see again go back to that slide 2010 matlab how much happened in that year 2013 between 2010 2013 three companies name changed and i was broke i was i was bankrupt almost i would there would be me meeting in in delhi somebody to meet somebody for an assignment and i would not have money to fill my petrol in the car and i would say i have i am busy for these two days i'll come after three days why because then i could club three meetings together so you have to decide yourself where you want and probably what i will say is that once that is clear then you start seeing the path being clear in term in front of you till your goal is not clear if you are coming here for the money find something else there is there are much better opportunities which will give you much more money than photography can ever give you believe you me not that photography cannot give you money i am not saying that but if you are for money look for somewhere else if you are not for money you are talking about passion you are talking about improving even when you are doing for hobby god damn it do it improve it justify it just not picking up the camera and clicking randomly i am not saying anything is wrong in there as far as you are enjoying the process but when we do that we tend to defend defendomania happens that everything everybody somebody says every time something says oh no he uh, i would label people that he knows nothing but to criticize you have to get rid of that find out your own way of getting rid of that it is your way it is that stone in your path and i think the best quote that comes to my mind right now is uh move out of your own way if you want to grow
you are blocking your own way with your ego with your arrogance you don't even realize but you are blocking your own way get out of your own way of to to glory and to success and to improve thank you oh. okay any questions or should i move let's move let's look into the good shots now <laughs> okay let me okay let me share now i am getting into now series of images representing different genres so coming with travel and culture um so this is my version of uh, whatever i do so um, some images will need explanation some will not if i don't explain if you feel like asking something please do ask so and here i would like to say something what i think so you asked me that um, why did you uh, you would know the answer that why did you create start creating portraits or 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 uh, something like that um, i think you asked something something no, similar uh, yeah i mean see for most of us it's really a one genre that really draws us in and then we expand so how did it happen for you did you just want to like go shoot or was it a specific genre that see i'll i'll tell you i'll tell you okay now i was always keen on something to do with nature and that is why i probably got into wildlife also initially and i started doing wildlife tours also i would not show any wildlife images here because i don't find them worthy enough to feature here i have done some good work but i don't think they are still good enough to be shared here anyways uh and this answer probably i got very recently through extra bite sessions uh, listening to many people one realization that i know now is that we get into a genre specifically when we are talking about hobby not we are talking not from the commercial standpoint commercial stand point will, will bring you into advertising you commercial side of it food photography um table top weddings uh, fashion and all those things uh, but purely from hobby you get drawn to something which is close by which you get to see every day so if we talk about extra bite sessions with all those photographer landscape photographers living in west coast so landscape they were in the middle of landscape unfortunately or fortunately we are in the middle of people we are middle of street True. so for me to click a landscape i still have to drive 400 km in one direction to, to go there and which is not easy in india 400 km probably in some west coast part in us or some other country is easier than in india it's a challenge it requires money it requires patience so the first thing that you get drawn into is what is your surrounding and our surrounding is people so i think that is the only reason that i can give you okay <clears throat> nothing much i i so i off late what what is happening is that i would also say that i've been experimenting on our own group exploring light no i have not told this to anybody by posting some silly odd simplistic images i was trying to figure out what is the response not that i don't like them i like them in a different reason for a different reason but one realization came to me that over a period of time i think we have become too techno savvy and we have been trying to striving hard to create create that perfect image and in in a while while doing that we are losing out on the fun of creating photographs doing photography itself rule of thirds ho raha hai nahi ho raha hai ye na exposure yahan se thoda sa blown aa raha are aane do na what's so wrong in it as far as you are keeping in mind the aesthetics you are enjoying and you are genuinely improving improving it is i think everything is right it's a part of that growing on process um simple i like the om behind him i am not a street photographer had i been a street photographer i know that i would have done something with this tilak and this but it was a spontaneous shot so i can't think beyond that anyways and i like the, the i like the way his uh, white clothes and his tilak 
matches with the merges yeah. with the ohm yeah yeah it's amazing so I, so for me so when i look at a photograph the basic fundamental and premise is is it telling me a story what is my what is the feeling i'm deriving from it here the omkar and the person who is immersed in his bhakti they are mixed they're clubbed right there's there's a center of basically overlap and that is the story for me and that's exactly what he's trying to achieve which is your main subject probably you know when you clicked it you probably didn't think about it so much but you know so many times it happens that we go through our portfolio like are this is telling us such a deep story ye to socha bhi nahi tha maine right and this photograph to me is telling such a beautiful story that the man who is probably praying to achieve it the photograph captures it they are overlap they are in sync thank you thank you <clears throat> this was uh, this was in ladakh um and uh, this is the maitreya buddha statue in uh, in uh, what is that place hundar and i was in that monastery and i just saw this and i created this nothing very simple but is i think it it's a kind of a different kind of a shot which i have not seen in past from from anybody So, even me i haven't seen any shot of this this is this kit right this is this kit yeah it's a beautiful shot so uh, i have been to this this uh, so many times but still uh, i'm still searching for this location from where like next this? time le jaunga next time le jaunga dikhaunga khada karke dikhaunga this is where you can shoot i think this is uh, right the, uh, on the right side there are a lot of uh, houses that you know at on the mountain right so, it's it's in the, it's from the monastery but you right. have to get into the monastery actually got it but from the monastery also i i was not able to figure it out <laughs> will 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 share now yes yeah, sir sure. yeah so <clears throat> this was this became very popular this is a stage shot uh, in bali tukadunda river and uh, nothing wrong with staging a shot as far as you don't say now these kids are playing i just created no they were not playing they don't play like this <coughs> you make them play you get them those those mugs of different colors you make them remove their shirt you make them sit in a posture and throw at a particular time and you click that's it <laughs> so uh this again um um i i just saw this lady I, it was in kumbh mela um in uh, trambikeshwar i think i pronounced it right anyways i saw this and i saw this open door and i just waited this lady came out and i missed that moment then i waited after 10 15 minutes she was going in and i created this again waited for her to come out but she didn't so it's okay i got one shot so that's that's a favorite shot this one. one yeah 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 i love this i love this okay right very cool okay nothing much i just like that painting on the wall of shiva with all those clothes lying on uh, uh, drying on the clothes line uh, kind of a different kind of a contrast on one hand we worship on the other hand right in front of that and there was a lot of filth also i somehow did not want to click that um uh, for whatever reason i have not created that image so this was uh, one image that i created do you think of the story in your head subconsciously when you're clicking these i have to be to be very honest it's not my favorite genre uh, particularly something like this street and all uh, particularly this it does not come to me naturally and and since i was going to kumbh mela again i had to psych myself internally that i have to now start looking at things differently and uh, i did i got successful in in some with few images but majority images i still failed and i don't regret will i go again yes i'll go again will i still try i'll continue trying till i uh, get to see but 
images like these yes i i spot them instantly uh, something still like that's why you you see that i have not included because of i i realize that my presentation is going to stretch a lot because i'm working on the doors and windows kind of a series over right. a period of time and i'm compiling them i want to intend to create a book out of it print a book out of it doors and windows from different uh, countries and cities and so uh, and as you see that even in initial days uh, that uh, uh, reflection on the glass building i have was practicing uh, spotting those uh, moments and those those uh, kind of uh, images out of nowhere uh, there was one image uh, which i posted recently uh, was that one dried tree uh, 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 plant kind of then the brick wall and there's a wooden kind of uh, as if plastered wall kind of a thing yes yes uh that was clicked in nepal i have forgotten to include in this you know it was i had it was so far that i had to take out once i spotted it i immediately knew i have to click that image and i had to take out my 100 400 and click at 400 and further crop it was so far so i have been training my eyes to spot certain things i am not not have not reached there but um i'm still trying to do lot of things this was one camel was running in in uh, and and i just i was lying on the slope of this uh sand dune here and he was running and we i made him run because there was a photo tour going on there was uh, there were participants there was a group that had come from us uh with me and traveling with me to rajasthan and um, so we had staged this for them but still getting it the right moment because we were running the risk that people were all along this path this this area and we had to be very clear with him that he should not uh, slip and fall on us because otherwise some fatality might happen yeah it's from sam dunes punit simple shot from um okay now here i would like to mention um while i was in mumbai and i was posting on flickr uh, that time there was no 500 px 500 px came very late flickr was very popular and sorry few people i was following whom you know is sapna reddy um a very good friend at that point of time also manish mamtani and uh, these were the few people that i was following and uh, and uh, th there was a group in mumbai and i was talking that how to get the genuine feedback how do i know that my image is genuinely good okay now i think that's the right question that i asked and then there this guy i don't remember whom i think mulchand de diya mulchand was that time mws he was the admin of that group and i think he only or maybe somebody else he said onex.com he mentioned that point of time that if your image gets published on onex.com then your image is nobody can dispute that that, that image is not good because this impartial thing happening and it is very rare to get it published and it was in the year 2010 since then i've been trying 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 to post i lost my account also in between i was mad at them that my images are not getting published i left the account and then i suddenly saw uh, and but then it was at the back of my mind i i i think i remember having spoken to rajneesh also about it rajneesh had already started posting and his image was already getting published his four or five images were published at that point of time i think so and i was telling him this story and i i said it has it has stuck here that getting published in onex is almost next to impossible i said i have to get it happen and and so i became a professional member of onex again started posting again started studying i did lot of studies used to look at images that were getting posted and getting published and look trying to study what what goes probably might go into the mind of uh, 
um, a curator who's publishing those images. I still do not have uh, the right answers, uh, but I am so delighted that after some time, and I take pride, no ego, no um, kind of uh, uh, brashness about it, um, that my images are now getting published. And I have some, I think, 19, 18, 19 images getting published there. And this is one of them. So I remembered because, so people might say that you did not clean this, you did not clean this. I said, to hell with it, yeah. Something, sometimes simplicity works. This is working only because of this light. And it was during this time in Pushkar, I had started, there was a, there was a, um, there was a person who was very senior to me. Um, he used to always say that shooting against light is a strict no-no. Don't shoot against light. Every time I would try and don't shoot against light. Only shoot against light if you want to create a silhouette. I said, what is so wrong? I would never argue with him, but I would practice. And believe me, from Pushkar, the only images that have won accolades are the ones which I have shot against light. So this, this is, I can call my image. I was, I was watching this interview by TJ Thorne and um, Alex Noriega and all those people. So Alex Noriega said that I'm looking at images which I can say they are mine. They are not created by anybody else. Not that this image is not created by anybody else. Still, believe me, it has already been eight, nine years when I click this image and still somebody posts something similar. I get a message either on WhatsApp or Messenger or email, depending on what they know. Sir, this is your image. Somebody has stolen your image. This makes me believe that this is my image. People might have copied it. And clicking this image it was certainly not an easy task. And this got published both in onex.com and NatGeo. So again, against light. These shots are just not possible now. So very simple shot. Um, Many would have it, but I still like the dynamics. I am I am not concerned whether this is blown out. This part is I if I sit on this image today, I would do a much better post processing. Yes, this was post process some six years back. I would do a much better post processing, but can I create a better image in terms of composition? I don't know because it all depends upon the moment and your agility and your eye at that point of time whether you can spot it at the right moment or not. And we've taken risks with this. Because when you the camera is on your face, you don't realize how close they are to you. And at times, they have been very, very close. Very simple. But what I liked was this and this part, the cloud. And again, against light. This has been one of the most widely. I, I have not entered any contest, so I'm 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 avoiding that word contest. Till now, I have not entered a single contest, not deliberately. I won one travel photographer of the year 2018 in one Facebook group, but. It was not deliberate. I, I was posting in the group as people post and my image was shortlisted and suddenly I realized that that image has won travel photographer of the year. But I have not entered a contest. So all I'm talking about is, is um, what I, this is, this is can be called my image because I took three days, three early mornings to create one image. So sun is rising. So you have very limited uh, time. These camels with the herders are running. They're not walking. They're running full speed. And where they're running here is a very narrow path. 
and beyond that narrow path is a slope of sand behind the moment the slope ends the narrow path again and a septic tank behind and i am along with few other photographers as well you can't be shooting alone in pushkar people throng you and you lying on that slope with all those thorns piercing you because that's a jungle that's a kind of a thorny bushes forest and three mornings i tried this and finally i got one shot because of the flow of neck there's no overlapping happening he's right and at to be at the right moment i didn't you can't make them pose and you run the risk at times suddenly uh, we've seen camels fall on this side because it's a very narrow path on which they are running now it does not exist it's been flattened helipad has come at this place so i think uh, whatever so there's no place like this now all these images maybe somewhere else uh, uh the how tough it was uh, to to take shots and i think we were the last one who like uh, saw these all these things happening yeah, yeah last last time we also shot we created the video that this is today is the last herd that is walking yeah. like this from tomorrow onwards it was not disallowed it was not allowed so we were there when it was banned and we saw the last herd of camel coming in pushkar like this and after that everything stopped very simple from from holi um so nothing much to talk about it everybody who understands holi is all, all about colors there in nandgaon samaj and uh, this is even simpler image because this is taken from a vantage point where people don't disturb you um uh, and you can simply zoom in create your composition at leisure and create an image um why i'm sharing this is because this again was featured this was featured in 500 px and uh, even in net geo i don't know for what reason because i find this to be a very simplistic kind of an image but still anyways i think sometimes uh, when the firangs are sitting foreigners are sitting colors they get carried away by the colors vibrancy probably for that reason yeah the color harmony is good uh, less green if the yellow to orange and red and then pink transition is very smooth in the image not jarring not jarring okay <laughs> the the but the kids uh so i just love the expressions on their faces and uh, holi again this was again top angle shot of uh, one procession going in holi in barsana and uh, so my this story of holi was published in in uh, in the thai airways in flight magazine um, savadika so it was published there uh, and i got paid handsomely so they pay handsomely and they picked me up they they probably were searching somewhere they found my images they found many other images but they shortlisted me as uh, the person who would whose images would get published with an article yeah this is just just going up close creating this image is not easy uh, anybody who's been there would know that or if you have created similar kind of an image using a normal lens that means you will come back with bruises on your back it's a certain done deal that's the prize that's the thing you get back uh, as a mark on your body so he's also singing the bhajans during holi and clicking this kind of tight shot again is requires to be and anybody who's been there you would know that you can't even see so you are clicking blindly you are you are blinded by colors uh, camera and you are wet drenching wet and you still have to compose um, do the exposure right and lot of stuff before you can really uh, probably hope to get one good image 
Puneet was asking, uh, do you shoot uh, whenever you're out on workshops with other participants, you shoot yourself? We all shoot, uh, but not at the cost of others learning. Um, there's always a process. So we share how to do, where to do, what to do. And they can't be sticking by me. I don't have plugs here that they get slotted somewhere on my body. And I ask them, I'm standing here, now you shoot. People are people. They have to be on their own. And when they are on their own, I, while keeping an eye on them, I also have to create images because I also can share that this is the way you can create. Especially at places like this, if I found my place, spot, which I, I know how, I know my way to do it. It's not easy. And all, most of the participants are unable to do that. I tell them, the moment you are able to spot me, don't hesitate, come to me. The moment they come to me, I leave my spot for them. It is for them to click. So it's a balance that we used to create. We, I continue creating that. And I think uh, that's the way everybody, every, everything is. And um, I do not even want to be on the, you know, as an eye overlooking them, ki, what are they doing? Kya kar rahe hai, theek kar rahe hai. I have told them, I have guided them enough now for them to click and come back and seek inputs. And if I feel the need that they need my hand holding, then no more shooting and hand holding is what needs to be done. This image again was, this has uh, been published widely um, on almost every forum where I've shared because of the kind of story that it is telling. And uh, it was not an easy thing. All I could see was some two people standing in one place, but that's it, I could see. My, my, all colors were in my eyes. And I just pointed the camera and showed that focus is right and clicked. That's it. And I got this. Prasad actually brought up a very good point. Uh, yeah. Because you've been leading workshops to, you know, like Banaras and then Pushkar and even multiple holy outings. Uh, do you hit, like, how do you keep keep yourself motivated to go to the same spots over and over again? Images like these, because I'm always looking for, now I'm looking for one unique image in those four days too. Just one image. So when I'm there, apart from, obviously, I have a job to motivate my participants to show them why they have come. They have shown interest in my photo tour or our photo tour and they join by paying some money. So it first becomes the duty. That is the biggest motivator that they have to go back with good images. Number one, that is the prime motivator. For me personally, as a photographer, I am now looking at only one image. So I don't know how many have been noticing or not. After Holi, I have not been posting, sharing multiple images. Maybe one or two and that's it. Last year, though, I have not even posted a single image because I could not find a single image. Mm. And that's perfectly all right. That's perfectly all right. Any challenges you face now that you have been to this location so many times? Yes, getting into the box thinking because um, it's very difficult. The moment you see the same people, same event happening, you can't think beyond your box thinking. What and it is very difficult to break that mold. Right. So at times I find my spot and I don't want to even pick up my camera. It happened this time. And there was another participant who had come from US all the way from US. And so I just, I, I just turned this way and I saw him standing. I said, to him, they come. I had not even picked up my camera. I had somehow managed my spot. And managing a spot, believe me, is 100% battle won. <laughs> After that, it is not even 1% job left to create images. Because things are happening right in front of you. You just have to figure out. If you don't create now, you are not, you are not meant for these kinds of festivals to shoot. So, I immediately gave. I, I did not even shoot. 
after that because the second time getting into some other corner is almost impossible So wow. Poonam Singh is yeah, there. This, in... is, this is from this side, this year. Yeah, this this one image is from this. Beautiful year. shot, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So this again has been published. I am not on 500 px anymore. I am there, but I don't post anywhere. I am not on Flickr. I am only on onex.com, and that is where it got published. NatGeo okay. has already stopped there, and NatGeo on Instagram, with all due respect to them, it is as good as trash. So, Jasiji Poonam Singh is on uh, YouTube. She has mentioned that uh, at times you have given away your gear to your participants so that they could shoot. So I, I, ha I, ha I haven't uh, heard or seen any any other mentor do that. I've done so, that. I've done that several times. So, wh what is the feeling in you? Like, uh, why do you do it? Or uh, I know it must be a very good feeling deep within when they go back home happy. But uh, anything more to it? See, Himadri. Uh, okay, um, let me let me give uh, my thoughts into it. It goes beyond just giving them the gear. See, when I started conducting workshops and photo tours, it was already crowded market. As I as I shared, when in two thousand ten, I became enrolled. I got enrolled with Canon India. There were already forty odd people, more than me. We're talking about Delhi. And India and internationally, it's a huge competition. How do you stand out? I know, and let me be honest, that the only way you can do it is to be to have one thing in your mind when you're conducting these kinds of tours is that they must go back with satis satisfaction, full satisfaction. I, I can't guarantee good images. I'm sorry. There was a time I even started writing a disclaimer in my photo tour in the end that joining this, signing for this tour does not guarantee you that you will come back with good images. I mean, somebody pointed out to me that you are being too upfront. Then I had to stop doing it. Uh, but but I think that's a, that's a reality because because it is like it is like you are asking the school to take guarantee that I will take admission in IIT. I mean, it is it is ridiculous. I can only guarantee that when you are there, whatever you need in terms of inputs, I'll give you. Even if you need gear. Now, this, this was never, this never happened initially. There were, there were been times when people suddenly needed it. I said, somebody did not get a wide angle. I said, take this. What will you do? I said, I'll manage. Don't worry about what will I do. As far as you are able to do, so my only thing is that if see mere ko ek sanak hai there's a there's a kida here that i want to be seen or ex, as exploring light i want exploring light to be seen as india's most respected not successful i'm not talking about success right now I, I don't know what is the measurement of success most respected photo tour companies by participants i'm not bothered about anybody else when they come with us they should say that now this is the only company we'll go with we are not perfect we've had situations where participants have abused me and come back We've gotten into altercation. A lot of things have happened. But, and that goes to prove that I, no matter what I want, I cannot satisfy everybody. But that percentage has been minuscule. So that, that kira na ho mele se sab kuch karwata hai. Imagine, samne first time even I am looking at Aurora. Okay. First time in my life as a mentor, Prakash had seen. So Prakash was the lead mentor. Iceland, I, we are standing first night in Aurora and right there. Th there's one guy, obviously nobody has seen, even I have not seen. And this participant tells me, Sir, I don't But I had, at least theoretically, I'm more sound than her. I want to shoot my image. But I am making her understand her 
ट्राइपॉड बॉल हैड बिलीव मी एंड सेटिंग अप द्राइपॉड पॉइंटिंग द कैमरा डूइंग ए मैनुअल फोकस एंड क्रिएटिंग एन इमेज बाय द टाइम इट आई कुड फिनिश विद हर और शो वॉज ओवर आई डोंट इवन ए सिंगल इमेज फ्रॉम दैट फर्स्ट शो दैट that i saw and i think i am i have no regrets sort sir why should i have regrets that's where i am that's why we are there for okay we did miss many of them right yeah <laughs> yeah uh, we've been lucky But anyway <laughs> so the interesting stories will unfold now anyways so <laughs> uh, portraits i have included portraits in fashion everything together because i didn't want to really stretch it beyond and uh, make it longer already we are 8:15 i think so people might be wanting to draw draw this is simple portrait nothing much um i have not done anything in post processing as well just the colors and and the wall behind they're just being in place i i think that's it nothing much here now this image very simple image i say that don't shy away from shooting simple images this simple image has earned me maximum money it's a beautiful shot believe me this has been published by in by australian travel uh, vouchers or a uh, brochures and travel books that they publish for india tourism they've been published by american they've been published by thai as the cover and on top it's written india and i continue getting feedback on this that this is the kind people will say perfection ye kyun hai i think you could have cloned it i can still do that i am not willing to uh, jassi sir aap se hi seekha hai perfection sir always boring perfection is a myth that's my belief perfection is a myth there's nothing called perfection and my my another belief over a period of time is that we we like something not because it is perfect we like something because there are imperfections there even forget photography let me go beyond that in a husband wife relationship compatibility is important imagine that relationship where both are perfect it will not work so it is these imperfections in any image which long a viewer to look to create better and motivates people to do better simple shot again my my that habit of getting close into the face not creating environmental shot i my my issue it's issue with me that i am dealing with but this again got published in one extra I was not happy with the shot, but it got published. So I am happy now. I don't know anybody this. Very simple image, but very close to my heart. Only because the way I wanted to, I I saw this. This is a very old image. In uh, in Hemis Monastery, I saw this kid, and I wanted to create. I I liked his face and eyes and everything. and i took out my 7200 because it was a little far in the moment i took my camera he ran and he ran towards his father and he held the hands like this in that very moment i realized that the story that i want is complete i did not want face of the father all i wanted to show was this that's it very simple nothing so.
another simple again tight so portraits i have an issue and guys i am trying to work hard on that i promise that i will but very i soon. like your tight shots as well like tight portrait shots as well i love them thank you thank you i kind of liked her expression she was behind the glass which had scratches so i just enhanced those scratches using photoshop brought them out more and uh, it was kind of a curiosity innocence whatever you might want to call it scratched innocence or whatever this was uh, a hoopla dancer whom i shot in studio and uh, she is so talented that she can uh, make those hooplas swing on her body uh, at at one time she can swing 12 hooplas at that point of time at least so just created some slow shutter and to show those hooplas and uh, i just asked her to keep her face because i could not use uh, uh, stroke per se because otherwise that everything would have been frozen to keep her uh, head as um, stable as possible and she did that here a different kind of um, concept where i just start asked her to use hooplas so that i can some of give an impression of the skirt metallic skirt or something so just couple of shots very simple shot from from pushkar portrait textured nothing much but i think i i really like um the simplicity in 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 her eyes and her expressions now fashion and all so all these fashion shots that you will see um rajneesh has been with me um and uh, he's again played an important part in in helping me understand the poses the lighting and he's he's played an important role in my understanding of fashion photography so simple again conceptual Uh, okay. Oh, you you shot that. That was another favorite. This this one. Which in okay. one episode, right? Pardon? Uh, the newspaper shot, the previous one. Ah, uh, yeah, this one. I think it's it was published in one X also. It it's yeah. So in in one X, uh, this this has been this has been published. This I have not shared also right now. Uh, this was not published. um and i posted it there but this was not published so and they're using uh, hard light and creating that shadow body shadow at the back backdrop this was one of the initial shoots in st petersburg where we were shooting in aqua studio so all water was being thrown on this model and back behind background lighting and um, this has been published on one x there is something which i don't like here is the position of this hand but i think um i don't know i, I was very reluctant to post it on one x also but when i post it to my surprise it got published so i presume that it is acceptable <laughs> so again talking about that perfection that we look into look for sometimes at times is not even required yes we need to be better we need to improve we need to take care of certain basics color harmony uh, tonality all those things yes it is required but perfection at times can be boring If you remember that photograph is one of my favorite. This one. Ah. We will soon go to Saint Petersburg and create similar shots at Aqua Studio. It is amazing that place. 
Uh, okay, sir. There is one question from Mr. Praveen. Yeah. Uh, Jaisi ji, uh, you could conduct you conduct different kinds of photo tools. What is your favorite kind of tools? I'm coming to them. Landscapes. <laughs> See, favorite. I have I have said that I have been very close to. Um, I have always wanted to shoot some something to do with nature, but initially. i realized that nature will not earn me so much of money so i got into fashion i i i, I shot portfolios as well did one or two weddings only very very initial stage few events as well but then moved away from that that was not my kind of genre uh, so but then uh, photo tours if you say all my photo tours are favorite in terms of genres i in that order now landscape wildlife i still have to get on with wildlife but it still will come on second spot in terms of uh, of my uh, wanting to my favorites then will be culture and portraits and last would come fashion i don't enjoy doing fashion believe me i don't enjoy i am lousy fashion photographer but now the commercial aspects we have to do it that's why i continue pursuing it because we have to justify that we do shoot good fashion as well that's why we can teach so coming to the favorite topic of all landscapers here landscapers is the wrong word but so this image from ladakh Poonam is watching. Poonam was there at this point of time. I think so, if I remember it right. Yes, Poonam was there, and we was we were playing find the light kind of a game in Lay Palace, and everybody looking at sky and pointing at random and creating, and we were having a lot of fun there because there was no light, and suddenly we saw a beam of light, and and we were quick and created this image. It lasted. This moment probably lasted few seconds or maybe a minute or so. That's it. and uh, this image has been widely published again it was published in netgeo also initially it was published in uh, 500 px also um, as uh, editor's favorite it was 1x yes certainly yes nothing great about this because it's not a good composition for me it is abruptly ending here but something different from a different angle uh going low and setting up a tripod uh, taking half an hour to set up the tripod at this spot because it was slippery there was no place to even stand for one person and i had to fix a tripod and still manage the shot and there was one stream of water falling on my back and i was getting drenched and uh, um and create this image long exposure all the splash coming on the filters so wish i had a wider angle lens to have created something beyond this i let me share some couple of facts here i hardly do pano i might start doing it now 2015 was the first time i tried my hands with nd filter and quite unsuccessfully i had purchased kokin filter it was horrendous it gave bad results i did not click after that 2016 is when i started seriously using nd filters and 2017 i was the brand ambassador of nissi the first brand ambassador appointed by nissi in india brand ambassador they still used to call as photo mentor nissi mentor but i was the only one who had the contract mentioning as brand ambassador and so but it was only 2016 when i started seriously using uh, filters this is ladakhs inspired by one image that you see from rajneesh that's an iconic image and i was not there in that tour when rajneesh was leading that tour so next year when i went not the same spot somewhere else i thought why not 
let me copy one iconic image so here it is this i don't know i still feel there's a lot can be done in this image in terms of post processing and make it look better i will try some day uh, but nonetheless this image has been featured everywhere where i have post and this image also came back came as a surprise because what happened was we uh, on a photo tour we were going from lay to uh, to pangong and it was highly kind of uh, overcast sky no light at all early morning uh, so early morning uh, at, at around 6 o'clock and uh, suddenly at one point one participant asked me sir aap hamesha light 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 bolte ho is light mein kaise kheencho so i immediately told the driver stop rajneesh you were there that time nahi no sir i was not there okay i immediately asked the driver to stop i said ruko yahi pe i got out i said let's see let's i think prasad says I, that he was he was there with you prasad says he was there with you no no he was not there with me you prasad know, says i remember this so yeah. probably and prasad was not there with me prasad were you there with me i i doubt he says i remember this okay, okay. Yeah. so that could be yeah. from so from so remote. i stopped and i saw I, i had to be lucky also believe me i had to be lucky ki maine rok to liya hai chode mein hoke now i have to create image also right so <laughs> across the road across no prasad was not there yeah prasad so across the road it was very far so i took my 100 400 out and i saw these i call them zebra mountains and uh, luckily these mountains were there and i could see the texture i could see the texture in the clouds they were not flat and i just created it and processed it there only that, uh, two days later after we came back from pangong very quick processing and uh, i have not worked on this image after that i never process well i am on tours i rarely process this was one such image i did and um, it got featured everywhere one is from uh, hemis national park uh, because yeah, this is yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's hemis national national park right. so jassi ji you said uh, now if you process it you will you would like to process it again so what will you do different i would want to create more depth between the layers mm. which is missing i believe that is missing it looks good i believe it is good because if one x team is publishing it it has to be good um, they are not publishing it because it's from just you bro they are publishing it probably because it is um it is the image um that they like but i think i think i might be wrong but i will have to sit on it sometime someday let's see rajan actually asked the question uh, i mean uh, not specifically to this image but it's been pending for a while uh, so as a landscape photo enthusiast which he is uh, what's the key to make a great landscape image if there are anything at all अरे बड़ा भयंकर सवाल पूछा राजन पूछे गए फ्रॉम बींग एन इम्पल्सिव शूटर वेर आई वुड क्लिक फोर हंड्रेड ऑट इमेजेस इन अ पर्टिकुलर डे i have reached a level when i go to iceland and come back with only 200 images and 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 uh, i do i miss images yes at times when you do this you will miss images and that's perfectly all right uh, so so the answer i don't have a clear answer to that um i have to visualize it as an end result in in terms of landscape at least rough i would be lying if i say that i really visualize it as the way you are looking at any image right now but as a rough idea that this is how it should look and then i click i still go wrong and 
I think what I would like to say here is that I read it somewhere, and um, um, I will say in my own words what it meant was that every photographer in landscape photography misses more than he creates. The only difference between a good landscape photographer and a mediocre and a bad landscape photographer is that a good photographer knows how to hide his misses and bad and mediocre does not figure out, is not in a position to figure out that this image is good or bad so and good. he publishes his bad and mediocre images. Very true. Very true. That is the only difference, I believe. Yeah, very well put. I completely agree. Okay. So, yeah, with experience, your hit ratio was also improved. That's true. True. So, but still, it's still a hit ratio. You will still create bad images. Your vision will still go wrong. And it's perfectly all right. Jassizi, as you are going through your landscapes, I'd like to ask a question which you could answer anytime you want to. Uh, like, how did black and white or monochromes happen to you? Because you are amazing at those. Okay, there's an interesting story. Uh, and this I'm sharing for the first time. This question has been asked to me a lot of times in the past, but I have never answered it the right way. Probably even I did not know the answer that till that time. I've been thinking that what brought me to my first black and white. I am bad with colors. Let me admit it. And I see Rajni smiling within. <laughs> I am bad with colors. I have to struggle to understand color theory. My daughter understands color theory better than me. She is studying in commerce, but she understands color theory much better than I do. I understand color theory once I sit in front of my computer. I don't understand color theory when I'm in the field. And I'm so bad with colors that my eyes want to see oversaturated colors. And there was a time I was going wrong with every every color photograph, every color processing. And with a lot of precautions also, I was not able to manage that. And I think that was the time I said to hell with colors, let me try black and white. And probably, I think I, I still will have to find out which was my first black and white. I will, I will try and find out now. I will go back into scan through my archives and try and figure out. I have no idea right now, but I think that was the main reason. And second point was, second reason, I think I mentioned this in one of the talks in, I think, somewhere, I don't know, I think in, on Instagram somewhere in during lockdown, is that um, in today's time when almost everybody is a photographer, so the kind of images, the number of, sheer number of images, volume of images that are getting created and published is humongous. Standing out as a photographer whom people recognize and, and know and identify with is, is a huge challenge. And I think black and white makes you do that. Makes you, at least helps you achieve that part. So I, and I find that black and white, um, I, I can manage it better easily easy as compared to colored images only because of my my kind of poor understanding not understanding i understand color theory but it is on field implementation is where i lack i still lack i have improved quite a lot but i still lack so just uh, just uh, just to uh, for our benefit uh, all of us out here uh, you say that you struggle with colors. Uh, Not colors per se. Uh, Post-processing in particular, I, I overdo sliders and I fail to understand where do I... I have controlled a lot, but yeah, I still do that. But I was only taking it on face value. I was not trying to uh, uh, go deep into that. But uh, for us, what is your advice? 
what so is your we, we have colors in in nature we are trying to capture the colors in nature so why do we go wrong when we are sitting in front of the computer we have okay. captured the data okay but we okay. seem to go wrong when we are sitting in front of the computer so why is that happening okay now this is what i'm trying to say is very good question what i'm trying to say is based on my realization my understanding i have not read it anywhere this is what has been my understanding is that when we click raw it's a data and and it shows us everything in dull okay we open it and it looks very dull and we start working on sliders our brain works very very curious it, it it it's a very strange thing here what is what's lying here and how eyes look at things any sudden change you will like it let me give you another example not related to photography it continuously rains for 3 days no sunshine everything is dull boring first day you like it then you start hating it why is it raining why it is so gloomy and one fine morning you get up not a spot of cloud bright sun almost bright as bright as piercing your eyes and you say wow it's a what a wonderful morning what is your take on that wonderful morning one hour after that you're sweating you don't like that light now precisely what happens is when we are sitting in front of a slider one slider up red wow flowers are popping out my sunset colors are looking fabulous but they are again i i come back to that that there's nothing called perfect it cannot be perfect you go back i have tried my own way so what happens is our eyes and brain initially whenever they look at bright colors because we've seen colors we don't see black and white we don't see in black and white we see in colors right and the moment all the colors pop up initially you like them now struggle comes after this that realizing that the colors that you are seeing are not real they are overdone how do you manage to see that is the trick i have managed to see that now earlier i never used i i always used to struggle why because i would post process wow done viola save as jpeg share on facebook done and third day i'm i'm saying what the hell has gone wrong here i'm not liking it anymore but is it still now uh, based on your um, taste uh, uh, is still the processing based on your taste or are you using tools available in photoshop to control your colors or saturation which color which tools tools like uh, channels you can i don't do so you can yeah, uh, let me let me break and i have never used channels i have never used any panels i am I, i am a novice i am wanting to learn now it's dangerous that i am speaking this in front of everybody but i can't be saying lie uh, panels are there on my photoshop if i open it you will see the panels okay i will not say anything you you ask ask this rajneesh tell what is this reality tumne mujhe kal kya bola tha batao parso किस पैनल से थोड़ा एक बार वीडियो तो देख लो <laughs> एक बार सीख तो लो बिलीव मी आप अच्छा कर लोगे डिड यू से दिस सर बिलीव मी अच्छा कर लोगे तो नहीं बोला था मैंने हाँ मतलब बोला था ना दैट मीन्स यू नो दैट आई डोंट यूज इट yeah but see bolna hai ki ek bhai dekh lo aap check kar i don't use it so i don't i uh, my post processing is one of the simplest i don't do much so a lot of photographers are going to relate to that i think majority of the photographers will relate to that and they should take inspiration from this that they can still produce top class award winning images without knowing photoshop i i don't do panels believe me in slovenia with you i don't know you remember i told you 
for the first time i did exposure bracketed shots till slovenia 2019 whatever images that you see are single shots single raw files i manage exposure try and manage exposure in my camera i have worked hard towards it i'm not saying that is the right process but i try and take it to a level in camera that opening shadows and managing highlights on a single image becomes possible so to that point just and, and just ji so, sorry so much just enter one just parting shot uh, just so that jassi ji knows that 2019 after shooting alongside with him for 10 days i've gone from 100% exposure bracketing to doing 90% single exposures <laughs> i can i can uh, very safely admit uh, in front of everybody uh, i just uh, uh, some you are saying so no no i i think so rajan brought up something which is very close to my heart as well so specifically when you're out on tours or generally what uh, how much importance do you lay on histogram especially very very important very very important because if i'm not uh, doing exposure bracketing i have to be very that's why i said it's a process in my mind that i have to pre visualize a rough version of what i want to create because if i don't do that i will not even know the histogram that i'm looking is right or wrong so in my final version in my mind if i have to create by opening up shadows is the process based on the lighting available that time or managing highlights then then i will look at the histogram and figure out this is right this this with this i will be able to manage is very very important for me because see kuch to karna padega aise don't blindly don't na karna true kuch so histogram becomes very important and i remember that uh, i waited for 3 years to get uh, into your exposure workshop and i was so excited then after 3 years finally i work hard I, I, my process has been very simple and i would say this to everybody anybody who's watching and if they are get, trying to get into photography is that my reason of not using nd filters i still remember i will dig out the, that conversation that i had with manish mamtani long time back and i asked him first time which nd filters do you use so he shared i said he says why do you ask which which do when do you use i said i am to buy the, my first ones he said what do you mean that you you not use nd filters at all i said no i haven't used till now i don't even know how does it how do they look uh, um, to hold them in my hands <laughs> and and he was he was surprised at what i said yeah go go and look at my images he says this is crazy i said yeah this is the, i have gone step by step so what i have done is there are there are multiple things to creating an image right it's not a simple process so i have taken one step at a time and left one thing which i felt was complicated and left it for later on not left it for good left it to take up later on so exposure was what i was trying to understand and it it took me time and believe me first time again let me repeat 2019 last year in september in october 2019 the last tour that we had slovenia the first time i ever tried exposure bracket never before that and i am i have hated hdr to the core right from my learning days one thing that i ever hated even before i could understand photography was hdr no why would you want to do that so very old image um in ladakh somewhere i don't know but again published on onex.com this was also published on onex.com this is the sun getting hidden this is this is white streaks are chunks of ice floating this i can call my image because nobody even knows where to shoot this from except our group nobody knows because reaching this spot is difficult 
it it is some risk taking here wow. i have been fascinated by shooting pangong every time i go i try and find a different composition different thing and uh, i have not included many images of pangong here in this presentation but there are many this is very close to my heart for for whatever reasons you can see and an alternate composition like this and this image was published in the nisi fine art book in 2019 january and i was the only indian photographer to have featured in that international magazine where more than 40 photographers have been published and this is the one of my favorites from your portfolio thank you yeah so another of this beautiful this was in ferro uh islands ferro i feel that i am not just jun- done justice to the place the beauty of the place i have only very few images from there for various reasons i i can't even pinpoint now but i would like to go back there and this was very interesting uh time when we shot this prakash was with me we were we reached there early in the morning it was raining it stopped uh, the entire path was slushy and we still walked and uh, we saw rainstorm coming we could see rainstorm coming our way we could see that we knew that 2 minutes or 5 minutes whatever time we will be drenched so we just packed the cameras and waited and it came it drenched us it went by and then we saw this beautiful light and we created again oh, ferro gorgeous okay. and uh, light was bad i was waiting at the beach prakash was also somewhere nearby he was locating some other spots and this dog came from somewhere and he wanted to play with me so he would pick up one stick and come and leave it in front of me and looking at my face and i would pick this stick and throw i would go and pick and come back this continued for half an hour and that is how i spend my time and then suddenly i could hear a whistle that probably his owner he whistled from far away and this dog ran and then i saw this scene in front of me and i wait this image <laughs> so otherwise one half an hour 45 minutes i had no clue that what is unfolding in front of me as well but dog was god sent yeah so dog i i love dog so i was only focusing on dog and i was enjoying that process of playing with the dog don't worry i wouldn't have left what <laughs> anyway, anyway we were standing there so for this specific shot for, so i mean technically if you look at the composition like obviously it's very left heavy shot but i think the light kind of helps you on the right side balances the image now at, in the field how did you conceive this pre visualize this image see i knew that colors were not there in the sky it was overcast so black and white was a dandy so i decide black and white almost in the field mm. that i would take this as a black and white rest the composition had to work because this was a stretch of uh, land in between sand this is a beach where i am we are standing also a beach there was just puddle of water uh, probably left behind after um, the uh, high tide turned to slow tide and that is when we reached so all i knew was that when i create a, a long exposure um, so now i can figure out when we create a long exposure that what kind of long exposure will give me streaks and what will not give me streaks almost up to 80 to 90% i am able to predict and my first exposure chances are high that i'll nail it in terms of what i want in terms of sky very rarely especially with this kind of an image i struggled hard uh, i had to take three images to to get this kind of uh, streak in the sky because it was uh, the wind was there but wind in the the sky was not there you could feel strong winds but in the sky there was no wind um so the clouds were not moving so wind was kind of acting as a deceptive thing because i thought that i'll be with a slow shutter not even very long shutter i'll i'll be able to manage these streaks but i could not 
and I had to take three different trials to figure that out. Now here it was much easier, and I could achieve it with uh, with I think second or third shot. So I created four or five shots, and I think all images um, uh, were good enough. Uh, there was low cloud cover moving around, so I knew what would it, how will it come. All I had to experiment was with different shutter speeds. And rest everything to be done in post processes. It's it's almost a fine art kind of an image, even to the extent that I have rotated this image. This is not how it looks. This is actually on this side. Okay. So I even rotated this, and this also got published in uh, in One X. Somehow, left heavy was for me personally. It was appealing to. Me. From your favorite beach, so yes. Now this also has a story because the, the beach that we see is very small. You don't get to see this angle from there. You get to see this, but not this angle. And we were shooting, 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 and uh, everybody got tired. And then I said, "Yeah, maja nahi hai." I somehow didn't like it. Um, not that I did not get good image, but. i get i don't like it when when um, you're shooting for one hour and you're shooting only one or two compositions there's no variation that means i said there has to be more scope then there's a on the left hand side when you face this there's a huge rock huge rock i started walking towards it and i suddenly realized that i could go on the side from un crawling under the rock and i did that and i saw this i said beautiful i came back took my camera and tripod i asked everybody to join me all my participants uh, only two joined me the rest everybody did not they, they were too tired because raat ko 2 baje se uthe hue the and we reached there we created this composition and beautiful i have not even used the other other images at all black and white version of godafoss um nothing much weather was bad overcast no color in the sky so i knew i had to create black and white i was just looking at something odd as a as a composition because it is very difficult to create different compositions in these waterfalls there there are very little scope there is not enough angles to stand at. to create by standing at different vantage points there hardly any there are only two three kind of and from there only creating a different kind of a composition was tough all i can say is that my front leg of the tripod was right here which i had to clone out right on the edge and it is windy there and people push you well when they are walking so i had to be very very careful i was holding the tripod and clicking this i have never been able to figure out the right composition for this particular place i have been experimenting i don't know this is right i don't i have many other images i don't know that is right but it is a very difficult composition to click i have tried verticals but somehow i like this i don't know why there is Uh, no proper harmony from between right and left but but i don't know there are challenges here but the sheer beauty of the place takes over nice shot in the middle of nowhere suddenly we saw sandeep ne mere yahan pe photo khichi hui hai tripod se main utar ke khada hua hu slippery tha uh, and wahan se fir ye beautiful reflections and very simple but i don't know i am a sucker for reflections jaise ji one thing that i note in all your images is that uh, you leave a lot of space on the top for the for the sky uh, what is the thought process behind that actually shayad uh, mera jo first long exposure shot tha which i think first tha yes initial which i have not included in this that had only this much of sky so uh, ranish would remember wo jo goa mein humne 
बीच पे कैमरे को नीचे करके खींचा था बिल्कुल सो आई डोंट नो सी फॉर मी इफ देर इज ड्रामा इन दिस स्काई अंटिल अनलेस देर इज देर इज समथिंग रियली इंपॉर्टेंट इन फोरग्राउंड आई वुड लाइक टू लीव दिस स्काई but it's a tricky thing which you will see in time in next couple of images you would remember very soon that yes you saw that i am also evolving as a photographer i am not saying that uh, as a landscape photographer now off late what i am creating is i am i am trying to uh, i am not trying to look at these kinds of images now even if they come i might click they will never see the day of uh, light of the day they will remain in my hard drive i am looking at something where there's a visual flow getting created in in foreground if there is not i might not even click it or it's an abstract it's almost reaching an abstract thing uh, i have few images in abstract but i am not included in this presentation because they are not good enough uh, i was just starting to shoot and probably it will take me some time um, um, to go some place and really create images um, conscious of being the fact that they have to be created as an abstract So no, the point, really, the point is that your images are, I for a for a lack of better word, they're they're refreshingly unclaustrophobic. If I don't know, I I don't, I don't like claustrophobic images. I don't I, I, may, I agree. I agree. I don't like beautiful. them. I personally don't like them. Yeah, it's so. Uh, but 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 it's my beautiful. style is way way opposite when I click portraits. They become claustrophobic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're not claustrophobic, but you are uh, filling up the frame. But yeah. here you leave a lot of space around, and it is so refreshing, so pleasant to look at. Thank you, thank you. So, Groningen, Prakash. Yes, I remember. I don't have any shot from here. I have couple of shots. I've included only one shot. This black and white shot also. Uh, we went there twice, and only on the second day I think we could. No, I think this was taken on the first day. The black and white version which I have, which I'll probably post in uh, in our our group someday very soon, is uh, is taken on the second day. We went there hoping to get reflections. Unfortunately, the weather was not good. Wind. It was windy, so we could not get reflections. Yeah, exactly. That took my mood away. <laughs> yeah, so you were not happy about it. <laughs> so my take every time is I have learned it over a period of time with hard way that I will not let anything disappoint me. If I reach a spot, I don't like it. It's okay. I will think of something else. I will still come back. I might not process that image. I might not still like it. but it will not deter me from creating an image just because weather was not good if the composition is working i will still look at something so what worked me was what i saw was this part honestly this is the only thing that i created this image for very simple image it almost looked like this when we were there and fog would come or clouds will come i don't know what they were they would completely hide this church and they would completely reveal this church that hide and seek continued when they would hide you could not see a hint of church and when they would reveal you could see in parts and all there were many images from here i might create couple of more images in different mood but i like this because it's a very simple free flowing composition um i could have there was i had in mind that even create i have even created a composition while clicking that putting this in dead center with slope on sorry with slope on both the sides but i still feel since the slope was not equal slope so i felt that this is working better had there been so if you see this is not so steep slope as compared to this had this also been steeper or this has been uh, almost like this i would have composed in that that center a beautiful place yeah beautiful place beautiful place skoga falls 
um i it's been difficult for me to shoot here um ek once it was only because of uh, sandeep i can't forget that and uh, because he create he want to create the image and my tripod was uh, locked inside the car and i could not even get the tripod and uh, and this is what i call box thinking that when i could not get the tripod i did not even think of picking up my long uh, telephoto lens and creating different composition this is box thinking because even without tripod this place offers you so much of opportunity to go create abstracts but when you get into box thinking when box thinking is when you are looking for one particular image and you don't get it uh, for whatever reason you don't even want to think beyond that and i have worked hard towards it this was our uh, probably second year of having gone there and i was still into box thinking i know now that when i go to iceland i am going to come back with different images i am not probably going to show any of even a single image of any any waterfall the way it looks i hope i i am able to manage that so i just asked uh, one participant poonam she is watching this if she is still there uh, yeah she is still there and i just asked her to stand there and i just click very simple shot um the uh, light was bad i just had to process it to make it even more bad <laughs> so this is not a good aurora image but there is a story behind it we were there and it was so windy you can't imagine you just can't imagine uh, sandeep was there yeah i was there we could not come out we could not stand and the weather was so it was so tricky that after some time when we are looking at this side it is um, our back is getting wet so rain or i don't know uh, water from the falls is because of the wind it was hitting our body and we were drenched at the back and front it was almost like you can see the stars also in at times and holding the tripod like this and one person for a moment i don't know for what reason he left he left the tripod and tripod with his camera and lens flew flew in the air it was that windy so just for that memory sake i have processed it and kept it here and shared it 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 was a phenomenal evening but after that we went again to another place to create images same night at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock sometimes and this is what i created and this has been published many places this is also one travel photographer of the year award in 2018 as i was sharing on one of the facebook groups world photography group i think it was it's managed by raj sarkar and um, and that's it um, i really love the shape of the aurora aurora has been i've been fascinated by it everybody gets fascinated by it i think nothing more to say it's beautiful thank you this was again middle of the night in the middle of nowhere we just stopped kept on clicking 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 till we received a call from hotel prakash received a call from hotel if you do not reach in half an hour we are going to cancel your booking so prakash leaving everything aside he starts transferring the money to their account so that they shouldn't do it because we could not have reached in half an hour and so beautiful pattern in the sky and i missed it you missed it and i think the beautiful part was that it is very difficult to see aurora in a moonlit night and this was a moonlit night you can see from the sky behind it is midnight and you the sky is still blue it, it in long exposure it is still coming out to be bluish and the aurora was so strong and it had snowed just few minutes back probably actually this road was closed yeah this day road. before yeah because yeah. it was snowing over there yeah and we were lucky to cross from here and it was yeah. full snowy except this place nowhere there was snow in yeah. iceland yeah. yeah 
Uh, this was the topmost part of Iceland. Yeah. This has this was crazy evening. I and Prakash was the only person there. The tour had ended. We had extended it by one day for ourselves, and the forecast was six point five KPI. So Prakash from his sources figured out where we could uh, spot the aurora at night, and. Uh, we drove i think almost 150 kilometers uh, to reach this area uh, if i remember it right the forecast was also heavy rains the same night we were actually chasing the, um, the spots in the clouds yeah, to get yeah. the aurora and and we were sunset we were shooting nearby and we thought that okay now sunset is almost done we need to immediately rush to have our dinner because 6.5 kpi is not an easy task and we were searching and after 30 kilometers in one direction we saw we found one small restaurant which was serving only pizzas we enter there we order one our pizza and we are having and i think something is something is outside it it's looking green and i think prakash me asked the uh, restaurant guy is it aurora he said yes I said to hell with it. We rushed. We almost left everything, and we came out. And we see, man, it is crazy. And the spot that we had decided that we will go and shoot, we could not have gone there. So we just stopped on the way, stopped our car in the middle of the road, and started looking for these small bus stops or whatever huts, whatever they were. And we started creating images, and. um it was phenomenal it was almost like you are you could walk into the aurora it was so strong i have no words to explain how uh, how 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 was it how does how did it look and feel but after this when we created five six different shots from this place we were looking for a new new composition we reached there we could not find by the time we turned back to this place it already became clouded and started raining and we drove back nothing else so but phenomenal this aurora i can never forget one of the strongest actually yeah strong 6.5 kpi is like crazy yeah one of the strongest we see yeah. shot is also phenomenal thank you thank you this was also featured on onex.com so now sandeep ji sky so you were lucky sir lucky nahi nah, see sky when i reached this place i did not see clouds and i said disappointed but since we were leading the tour we had participants so i had to let them click so i was looking for compositions of leading lines and there were many images that we created on this side of the church also on the other side there were leading line we were finding and we were creating there were this side also there were stones and structures you could create that but nothing was really forming a very compelling shot because of the flat sky so we just waited and waiting waited for the slow tide to come because initially when we reached this water was almost up to here high tide was there and we waited 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 and sun was already setting from this side and just created one chose one spot where we could create a leading line or a curve using the wave this became the anchor point and this wave uh, so that when the wave comes the timing had to be right so three stop nd filter and just to cut down enough light to get half a second exposure or one second exposure that's it and so obviously sky had to be compromised this yeah i think this I, was uh, last year this was not on the trip i was with you no 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 this is last year yeah this was 2019 when i was there we had beautiful skies we had just beautiful yeah we uh, that time i missed out on that yeah i think the flat sky works i think the flat sky works for this image because uh, if you of your strong foreground and your middle ground the focus is there uh, that is what jasit has done he's taken away the attention from the sky all your attention is on the foreground and the 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 wave action you know so had the sky been had the sky been very dramatic it would have been you know very convoluted image very complicated yeah. image so the flat sky adds on to the rest of the image 
This is stunning. No, actually, this place looks good for both the both the time. When the sky is there with clouds, this area is so massive. You see those clouds. Oh yeah, yeah. And is... under that, under that massive clouds, na, this small building really looks very. You good. know this this place is magical. This is on the beach. Yeah. You know, if you see closely, there are ropes here. Right, right, right. It's been tied by ropes because winds are so strong hmm. that the winds can blow this church away. So they've tied it with ropes, strong ropes. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, dramatic place. From both sides, it looks good. Yeah. My favorite so, part of this. Again, place. less of sky. I wish I could have shot this with focal length blend, um, but under try and look at it. I am not even doing exposure bracketing. So focal length blend is something at a different level. Not that I can't do it. I won't do it in time. I am not seeing that. But here, uh, I was too drawn towards the pattern of the flow of the leaves getting created. And Sandeep is testimony to the fact I refuse to see other spots. I used to go and I can come back here. He has created diverse compositions. I did not. For me, second composition will only come after I have done justice with the first composition. And I was trying to do justice with this. So I was, cre I, sorry, I had created one image from here, one image from here, one image from here, one image from here, from where I am clicking. And this image finally worked. And in terms of different focal lengths. By the time I could finish this, there was no time to go back to creating second composition. So I can't hop around. I, I don't. I, I If I see composition, I have to do justice there. And that way, I end up losing a lot of opportunities and I'm okay. With it. So I know next time when I go, what do I have to do? <laughs> Beautiful. Another simple shot. I Everything that, the only thing that happened here was the rainbow. Not an easy place to shoot this waterfall from because it's very difficult to show this part sharp because there's a water mist in the air, which you don't even see at times. And that is blocking the focus, making the focus look soft. And it looks very odd. This thing being in sharp focus, everything soft and this almost so soft that it doesn't look good. So you have to really bring out that punchiness through whatever contrast and a lot of things to be done. But otherwise, nothing much. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely shot. So this time in, in Iceland, it was raining, raining, raining. It was very unpredictable weather. So much so that everybody whom we met said one thing. Welcome to Iceland, but sorry for the weather. As if they were being apologetic that we are not able to get images. Because some people now know us. The owner of this hotel at this place behind, uh, beyond this uh, mountain also said the same thing. Sorry for the weather. We can't help it. Because it was very unnatural of Iceland to have that kind of weather and lasting weather, uh, kind of rainy and gloomy weather lasting for four continuous days. It did not stop raining. And uh, But when did it stop? Uh, momentarily, that is when it had created a lot of water puddles here. So, what you see from this place are the bushes that mounds of those bushes. And we got luckily. So, rain in a way favored us to create a different kind of a composition. All I had to do was find a puddle which kind of creates a leading line towards it. Nothing much. Rest was done by post processing. I really love the treatment, what you have done with this. Thanks to you also, bye. Right. <laughs> Nobody would have seen this now. These are a couple of few images that I'm showing, which have been seen for the first time. This is one of them, shot from aeroplane. So no drone. I am not a fan of drone photography. I'm not a very good fan of panorama. I might click it again. 
I don't see myself resorting to drone photography at least in near future. I admire them. I'm not a fan. I don't want to click. Uh, the the pleasure that I get in setting up the tripod and setting up the camera and creating the image is far far greater than just holding that remote and I know I'm sorry I, I don't want to do that with all due respect to Prakash and everybody else who, who does them I admire them but it is <laughs> I, was about to say. I, I admire them I might <laughs> even want to ask you tomorrow that please let me hold it would end there. At least as of now, paradigm shift happens. It has happened with me in past. So I never say that I will never click it. So my statements now are that I don't see myself clicking in near future, but probably sometime, I don't know. This is, this oh people have seen again from aeroplane. Incredible. And this is from aircraft in, in flight. This also from aircraft in flight. This is not, this is the first time that I'm revealing this. And these are two fine arts that have been, I have, um, and let me say that, thank you Rajneesh for, for, and I don't have any qualms in saying that because I was running short of time for this presentation and I had no time. I had, was doing there was too much on my plate for last one week, this week. I still said yes and okay, okay, theek hai. And then Rajneesh did some justice to this magic, played magic with this and other one. This is from Faroe Islands, pure fine art. And another one is also uh, pure fine art, but from Nepal. It's a pure fine art, it's not reality. And that's what it is. Boat, yes, it does exist. Water it does exist. Sky it does exist, everything. But... Uh, it's not a composite, nothing. I'm not even a fan of uh, composites. Um, so you will not see uh, much in, in my images. I think I think that's it. And so the zid continues. And I will continue to be staying ziddi. Thank you. I think... Uh, the fair yeah, any, any questions, guys? <laughs> the assessment was that this was probably definitely of all the team bites that we have had. You know, this there was a reason that we did this at the last because this was expected to be the best. So you haven't you haven't pulled up a surprise by you know having a bad session. This was incredible. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. I'm, I I had, I had goosebumps throughout. Yeah. Bhai, Prasad Bhai, sometimes kya hota hai? Uh, when when you've gone through uh, your journey um, you you see you you tackle those situations head on and where things have not been good and uh, family supports you and then when family supports you you are even under more pressure because now you have to come you, you have to justify that your decisions and i have been so ziddi ki naukri mein nahi jaunga I will not go back to job. I am I I am misfit. I I can't do that. I am sorry. I can't. I've I've worked for 15 good years, and I think that I I've, I've overworked there. Uh, I I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy nine to five. People say that means you are lazy. No. Now my job is from the time I get up to the time I sleep, and I get up at 5:30 in the morning. I sleep at one, 12 or one o'clock at night, and. I continuously work. I don't enjoy nine to five. I enjoy from the moment I open my eyes to the moment I close my eyes. I'm happy at doing that. And also you will have sleepless nights when certain ideas occur to, I your, I, to you I, and you my, are not yet executed. Yeah, yeah, months, months after month, I, I sleep at uh, these days also one o'clock, one thirty. Um, and continuously getting up without fail at 5.30 in the morning. I, I don't know. Uh, that, that's, that's been the life that I enjoy now. It does make me tired, but it's okay. Ek din so lete hai, kisi din. Kisi ek din. I remember in the tools, like, uh, aapko, aapke, mere beech mein, 
लेकिन इसमें लड़ाई एक ही है ये में से एक ही चीज में डांट खाता है तो सुबह क्यों नहीं उठता भाई टाइम से क्यों नहीं उठता जब मेरी दोपहर होने की आती है जब मेरे चार घंटे उठे हुए हो चुके होते हैं तो ये कहता है मैं भी सोने जा रहा हूँ तो जो एक्चुअली क्या होता है जो आर्टिस्ट लोग होते हैं ना वो आराम से शांति से काम करते हैं <laughs> हाँ जी या सो दैट वाज इट सो आई हैव नथिंग मोर टू से देयर एनी क्वेश्चंस ऑन यूट्यूब और यू हैव एनीथिंग इन माइंड प्लीज डू आस देयर आर इन यूट्यूब बिफोर टेकिंग दैट आई हैव वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम माय साइड दैट इज रसी जी यू हैव बीन अ जज ऑन मेनी फोटोग्राफी कंपटीशन I have not entered any competition. I have never no, no, participated no. any competition. No, you have judged. Judged, judged many competitions. Yes. My biggest competition that I judged that company now does not run competition, so it, you will not even be able to find it. It was that was the, my biggest moment of glory. It came in two thousand seventeen. Two thousand seventeen, there was an international contest uh, uh, run by a company in Paris. and that was a huge humongous big contest uh, 50000 entries it generated why i say that it was one of the biggest breaks for me was it, it had a very unique jury very unique jury they had 10 jury members uh, but each representing one country so for some reason i don't know i have no clue and i find myself plain lucky there and i still have no clue how they got hold of my profile from where they found it i just received one mail and i said man is it can it be even true and i was representing india as a jury and they were they were believe me everybody other than me was a magnum photographer i don't know how how was i there but i was there and and next was recent kumbh mela so i was an official jury for the kumbh mela contest Uh, along with another wonderful person from Varanasi, and I judge that. There are many others that I've done. These two were the biggest ones that I've done. So now my question is uh, that uh, when you judge the entries, what do you look for in those entries? And uh, sometimes such entries will come which will make you surprised, like which will surprise you. Like I couldn't have taken such an image. That happens, right? Yeah, it happens. So, so, uh, so, how do you judge the images, and what do you look for in the images, so that if there are uh, viewers in this YouTube session who would like to participate in contest or something like that, or uh, like competitions, so they could learn a thing or two. See, there are two th- two two aspects to this answer. One is uh, uh, how do we judge? Um, it is a very difficult process, and if you see some contest in recent part have created controversy by in opinion of everybody outside that this image that has one is way too mediocre uh it did not deserve um i have never said that and i believe that there are reasons for that and um even in our contest that we did in india clicks um i decided to opt out of being a jury uh, because um, i did not want anybody to say that the 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 uh, contest was partial in terms of anything because i knew all the people who were participating anyways so so what happens is in a process let's say there are i am not talking about 50000 entries i am talking about a mediocre 1000 odd entries the jury is sitting in in all good renowned contest which are respectable contest all jury are given independently access to we don't even get to see each other access to the folders or images that they share and when we are browsing through and the time is limited we have to judge very quickly one rejection theory is criteria is 
if a similar image has been submitted by three or four people almost similar almost similar and they might not be mirror copies but almost similar all get rejected no matter how good they are because then either they were shot in a group or it's a very common thing no matter how good they are that sometimes lead to mediocrity as well so let me admit there uh, but it will be injustice for others who do not win who have a similar kind of an image it's very difficult to justify that not that we are there to justify but still from the organizer point of view second criteria is always let's say somebody something really comes out wow then we shortlist and we try and analyze depending upon the genre could it be real also or it is a word of it's it's a work of fiction kind of multiple things and <coughs> and which does not which is not allowed as per the rules till we get the raw which is not easy at times we are left to our judgment and if the judgment is proven wrong later on then that award is also withdrawn later on we have seen those instances so we do commit people jury do commit mistake that is one part but the time frame that is given to shortlist images is very very limited so margin of error has to be small but it goes up because of the time slot second part is for people who are participating there are two things um, i've released one video also in past there are two aspects to it one is that um, <clears throat> your image is being judged by people who have diverse tastes in terms of photography what looks good to you might not appeal to them forget you and them between jury what looks good to me might not appeal to you as uh, himadri if you are the jury so one is that second is uh, second is when you are participating look at the jury people don't look at the jury people look at the entries is the wrong place to look at look at the jury study their work if you can now you will get the chance that if jassi is is the jury then these are the kinds of images that he will like and try and reach a a point where you say that probably this image might be liked by most you it can still go wrong so be it it's a very complicated process i don't know whether i've done justice with the answer but that's the only thing that i know absolutely that that adds some insight to the whole process yeah. <clears throat> so uh, i think Puneet actually asked one question at the beginning, and I wanted to supplement that, right? So he asked, uh, "How has COVID, the lockdown as a whole, impacted you, right?" Uh, and I would probably supplement that by asking, uh, "One of one of the probably repercussions that are it has led to is we are sitting at home, right? All of us people with deep creative instincts." and as a result we are creating a lot of content through the social media as well and uh, i think the live sessions and we discuss about it the live sessions through instagram and then now facebook youtube the number of uh, facebook content the instagram content if you look at the statistics it's like almost uh, become 3x roughly almost 27 point some percentage is the uptick right uh, sorry 270% is the uptick so it's a huge steep so yeah. what's your take on it how has it impacted you and what do you make of this crazy uptick in the social media volume okay let me start by what how i was thinking when the lockdown happened i was already going through because of some happenings in my life my mother expired um, last year in september and within two days of her death i had to fly to iceland to lead a tour 
within two days. So 15th of September, she expired and 17th of September was my flight to Iceland. And I still flew. I could not even complete the last rites because I was committed to the group. And uh, I flew, I led that tour. So that had made me emotionally unstable to an extent that when I came back, I did not work at all, not on anything. I did not pick up the camera apart from just one three day tour that I did in the end towards March in uh, Holi. So from October till March, I did not do anything. That means no money, no earning, nothing. And when we do that, when we get into that, we do not get the thought that that you will, something like COVID will happen. By the time I was mentally getting ready to get into the groove, COVID happened. Because I had a lot of plans after Holi that I will come back from Holi and this is now I'll start because I had to take control of situation now. And then COVID happened. Now I have somehow, I've gone through so many ups and downs in life in, 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 in photography life that I have learned to manage my emotions. I don't let to let uh, my family experience that or, or feel that I'm, I'm really feeling the pressure. Though people can read me. They say that they can still read me. So I'm, I, I know. But I was worried. Having come from science background, something also told me that what we are saying that it will become in good in August and all, something within, told, within me told me that it will not. There are a couple of people who are watching this session uh, also to, when they were speaking to me, they said, don't you, aren't you thinking very pessimistically? I said, no, I, I hope that I am pessimistic. I hope I'm proven wrong. But this is my belief. And I would want to get proven wrong because in the end, nobody wants those kinds of situations to linger on. Anyways, and it was not going right. And I had to now all over again, change my working style. We all had to change. No tours, no physical workshops. So webinar and everything. And it was not easy. While this thing was happening, I was still grappling with, and I was, I remember having spoken to my wife. I said, Agar ye September, October ke baad nikal jata hai, then we might have to wind up light chairs or dilute its structure. Then extra bites happen. We all know. I don't want to get into details. People are aware. If they are not aware, we might even tell them some other time. But you all came together. And for me, extra bite sessions have become my way of learning, getting in touch with people whom I could even only dream uh, till some time back, interacting with them one on one. Uh, interviewing them, learning from them, it's been a hugely positive kind of spike that has come into my mind, thought process. And then we are thinking positive. If this had not happened, believe me, I would have become insane. At least I would have. All People this. ask me, Abhi bhi kyun karte chale ja rahe? I said, it does not... No, Second part to this answer is, I have answered this to somebody else in the morning as well, today morning itself. Similar question. It's like saying, uh, and Som, don't feel bad because you've also been in the sailing in the same boat. You've also said that uh, I think too much content is being created. Yes. It's an oversaturation. It's like saying, yeah, everybody we say, every day we say so many photographers creating so many landscape photography, creating so many landscape images. Today, I'm feeling super bad and it, it is oversaturation of content of landscape photography or street or whatever genre. I will not pick up the camera. Huh? I will stop going to library because they keep adding books to library. Huh? Why? As a content creator, my job is to create content. I think we have created less content. My passion tells me that I would create a content daily again for others 
it is up to them whether they see value in this or not. There are still people who are saying that, sir, come kyo kar diya? Mm. I read a story somewhere and it roughly kind of justifies this that um, there was this uh, music performer who uh, had a show to perform and he goes on the stage. It's just a story. He goes on the stage and uh, he sees in the entire theater, there's only one person sitting. And he feels very demotivated. He says, he, but he's perplexed. And then he asks that guy, uh, what would you do in this situation? If you are in my place and I'm sitting in your place, would you still perform? He says, I don't understand all this. I'm a simple um, 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 herder of sheep, my own sheep, herd of sheep. Let us say in one fine evening, only one sheep gets out of the herd and, and is keen to graze. I will still have to take the sheep for grazing because that sheep is hungry. And I have to feed that sheep. I will relate that to my this thing. There could be millions of people disliking what is happening. If there is one person who is seeking that content and is is hooking on to our our videos every time we log in, only for that one person we will continue producing content. Absolutely. We are content creators. We are nobody to judge. Uh, we are library owners. We are, we, as a library owner, I have to ensure that a person who walks in to my library, he asks for a book. I have to have that book in my library. If it doesn't, if I don't have, I have done injustice. Right. Only from that perspective, I'll continue creating content, no matter what. Yes, okay. there's an overdose. And like us, there are many people who are doing it. And if we feel that this is the right way to approach, what, what is wrong if others also feel? And then all of these people are trying to create, they're creating something positive. Right. How can a positive be oversaturated? I as an individual can have all the rights to shut myself off. Nothing wrong in it. But we are content creators. I think I've answered that. Yeah, I think uh, absolutely stunning and uh, reverberating session. We still have 40 people and it's closing down on four hours now. Man, so, thank, you. thank you guys. You have been phenomenal. I know that it's not easy to sit for. Man, this is, um, I'm, I'm sorry for stretching it. Uh, no, I, Jesse, I think you just said it. We are content creators and consumers <laughs> will stick around. I was I, I, I was speaking to Dinesh sir the other day. Dinesh sir, uh, he was there actually in the session. He was there. He was, he was there. I wish I could have had him here. He has been a real support in helping us push pull these sessions through in other genres, and so I, so have been many other people. Um, and every time I have asked him, sir, agle hafte kisi ko la sakte hain. Yes, tell me. Let's see. He has never said no. What has he has to gain from this? Let's let's be honest about it. Right. It's the passion. And when you're talking about passion, then you don't look at all those things. I think then then things are at work at a different level. Every day when I come, uh, I've done much more sessions than all of you have done because you've been a part of landscape i've been virtually doing one at one point i was doing it daily i used to get tired every time sit here it's a it's a different learning there's so much to learn so much to learn from these masters in photography i can't i am now itching somehow itching to go out and and whatever is there in my mind my worry is that how will i handle this my worry is not how will we handle the content there how will we handle this much here? I might have to go back again and watch those videos to, 
to ensure that I don't forget anything. Right. Thank you, Jesse. On behalf of the entire team for this wonderful session for making us a family, and uh, we can oh, only look at it. You guys are more than a family, man. What you have done, believe me, I keep saying this every day in my house that if not for you and if not for other people, even like uh, Dinesh sir and uh, Radha Krishnan sir and, and all those people whom, whose name I'm not taking, Akash Das sir, all these people, I, I, I have no words. I, light chasers would have shut down by now. I mean, people uh, are I reciprocating, think. Jesse. People are reciprocating about... Not the... that we are making money right now. But we are sane. We are happy. We are enjoying. It's it's a different feeling. Yeah. I think the positivity, right? And that's what yeah. separates the content, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, I don't think we have tried to uh, strip somebody of their uh, pride or uh, their you know initiatives. It's something that we have done out of love and passion. So uh, thank you for all your positivity, all your wit, all your warmth. And uh, I think everybody is helping each other in this group because they're trying to reciprocate what you share with us. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Okay. Thank you for, for being there. Thank you for, I don't know, I was not ready for this session. And you all know that. I had to force myself, convince myself because of all of you. And I said, okay, let me come. It, it <laughs> did look odd in between that why I am going on an interview kind of a thing on my own channel and does it look preposterous kind of a thing that Jada show off kar rahe. But I think, um, um, and it was launched earlier and, and cancelled as well and I was not ready. I was in a way not prepared even today, to be very honest. I was working on the presentation, the flow, and I was not clear what, how much should I reveal today, to be honest, because um, there are a lot of things that I have even not shared today. Uh, it's been it's been a journey that that I would looking back, I would still say that I would still want to live this life. I don't want to trade this off with anything. Same challenges, bring them on. No hassles, no hassles. And okay. thank you guys, thank you guys for convincing me <laughs> to do this. And uh, uh, I'm humbled. That's that's all I can say. I'm, I'm, I'm choked with emotions right now. And uh, we're inspired. We're inspired. I'm humbled. Thank you again. Thank you guys. Thank you. On behalf of the whole team. Yeah, no, sir, no, sir. Sir. Can I take uh, this screenshot? Yes. Thumbs, thumbs up, Thank you. Thanks to everybody on YouTube who actually. Yeah, thanks to everybody on YouTube. Thank you. My school friends were also there. Thank yes. you. Your classmates were there. They were classmates from one to fifth standard or sixth standard or seventh standard. They have located me on Facebook. They've been chatting with me and super delighted. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye. -bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.